We'll be recording. Like shit. You're a piss rag, you're a piss rag, you're a piss rag. You're a piss rag, you're a piss rag, you're a piss rag. Fuck your chair, banging your head. You're down the local pub, drinking the dregs. It's half past one, you can't stand up. Come on, boys, let's get fucked up. You're a piss rag, you're a piss rag, you're a piss rag. You're a piss rag, you're a piss rag, you're a piss rag. You're a piss rag, you're a piss rag, you're a piss rag. You're a piss rag, you're a piss rag, you're a piss rag. Yeah, fucking get us a bit. You're a piss rag, you're a piss rag, you're a piss rag. You're a piss rag, you're a piss rag, you're a piss rag. You're a piss rag, you're a piss rag, you're a piss rag. You're a piss rag, you're a piss rag, you're a piss rag. You're a piss rag. Lenny, you're a fucking piss rag. And that was at Ben Lids. You're on Night Train Radio with Jay and Lenny. How are you, my friend? I'm well, mate. I'm very well. That was, that was good the second time around. It was, man. You there was nothing it. wrong with your intro. We you fu- used you it. fucked up the first one. I didn't fuck up shit. It was you, you cocaine addict. Uh, that's true. That's true. How have you been? Good, man. Good. Just well, not hanging around. That's, that's true. Well, speaking of, on the last episode, uh, which you can find on all good streaming services, mm-hmm. you were going to give us a, a suicide update. You were suicidal for a while. I was. Has I there was. been any suicides in the last two weeks? No, I, not successful. Can't even do Unsuccessful. that. Unsuccessful. Right. I can't get that right. I'll, I'm gonna, I'll try again. Yeah, well, well, look, you've got plenty of well wishes, and we, uh, we know I'll you can do it. I'll get knocked down, you can but I'll get up again. You know, so I'll, I'll give it a crack. <laughs> They're never going to keep you down. Never going to keep me down. Well, we listened to, uh, to Bin Lids at the start, Piss Rec, which is very appropriate for this kind of podcast. And they're in the room today, Jaden Mason Gibbo. How are you, boys? Well, thank you. Welcome, thank fellas. You. Good. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming on. We're excited today. It's going to be the first one with live music, so we're yeah. appreciative of that. What's been going on? Same as everyone else, man. Just sitting at home, pulling our dicks. <laughs> Same as the rest of the world. Same as absolutely everybody. <laughs> same as everybody else. Yep. I mean, it sucks. I mean, you guys are going through the same thing all other bands are going through at the moment and not being able to, to play anywhere, but you're also a, a pro wrestler as well, so all the fun stuff is yeah. part of your life. My life's changed really a lot. Yeah. How much have you wanked? Yeah, well... I weigh about two kilos less from the start of lockdown, which is really opposite to what people do. And I just think it's just lost from semen. Considering you've gained six kilos in the right arm as well. So that's a lot of semen <laughs> yeah, lost. Yeah. I've lost, yeah, two kilos from the whole body, but six kilos in my muscle <laughs> in the right arm. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, it's looking strong. Don't punch me with it later on. <laughs> Mason, plenty of wanking? Yeah. Yeah, a lot. And Gibbo, I haven't even got to ask you. Bad. You're doing it right now. It's just the usual. <laughs> <laughs> Gibbo is masturbating in the room as we speak. If you hear slapping noises, that's what it is. You guys take advantage of Pornhub special offer when the whole quarantine thing started? No. Did no. you even know what that was? Oh, I, I did. Heard. Yeah, I did. I, I did I'm hear glad that. someone else knew what it was. <laughs> Fuck, I was a bit worried then. You just look like the biggest perv in well, the I world. I did know what it was, but I thought it'd be funny to throw in the bus a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> just let, let the room simmer a little bit. <laughs> Let's wait and see where he's going to take this if we stay silent. I mean, people are either pregnant or wanking in this. It's fucking, it's, it's crazy. A lot of sex and a lot of masturbation. It's been a good time. Anyway, thanks to our sponsors at Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell us, I guess, not a, a, you guys are pretty big around Maitland, but for those who aren't from the area, tell us a bit about Bin Lids. Uh, oh, geez, I'm going to do a lot of talking. That's as soon fine, as you that's, said that's that, all we both want. of those motherfuckers looked at me. <laughs> uh, so I guess we're just a uh, punk band. Um, and we take uh, colloquialisms from Australian um, suburban contexts and turn them into songs. I suppose that's basically the the gist of what Binlids do. Bogan, bogan punk. Yeah. Well, let's not say bo- let's not say bogan punk. Bogan's dumb. You know, this isn't, this yeah. isn't dumb. I don't think. Uh, yeah. There's a difference between bogan and and this. Well, bogan's synonymous with dumb. Yeah. 
Let's say that because we're looking at like the suburban landscape and there's a lot of things that you know, people do that's quite funny. You know, when you look at the, the context of middle class Australia, it's, it's, it's fucking dumb. You know, look at, our, look at our songs. There's a lot of shit that happens. It's kind of funny. And when you, when you look at it at, from a different perspective, you take a step back and look at it. So you make songs about it and people are like, oh, yeah, that's, that's actually pretty funny. Well, it works. You can laugh at yourself too, which is the main thing. Yeah, and that's the, we're in it. We're not making fun of other people. We're making fun of our, ourselves, our you friends, know, our you're family. You're punching down, you're punching directly at your own head. Yeah. Just taking the piss out of laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's exactly right. <laughs> First time we get to use the sound effects sucked in, Mason. So... You, before we came on air, Gabriel, you were talking a bit about your old man listening to music. What kind of shit were you guys listening to as a as young men? Growing up, Dad had the shittest music taste out of my both my parents. Mum has good music taste. Um, I got all of my music inspiration from BMX DVDs. I was a BMX bandit back in the day. Yeah, right. Um, so I'd be listening to BMX DVDs and want to listen to what they were doing. I remember like trying to download, I think it was Suffragette City on LimeWire. I was getting the shit, so mum's like, what's wrong? I was, I'm trying to download this song. I was like, hey, man, no, leave me alone. She's like, it's here on fucking TV, you dickhead. And I was like, oh, cool. <laughs> I, I, I had a similar thing with all the Tony Hawk games, right? That's how I discovered a lot of uh, like bands like Lagwagon and, and yeah. Anthrax and shit like yeah. that. And Very much just, the same for me too, yeah. They just re-released the Tony Hawk game, so hopefully... 4th of September, Mason's birthday next Friday. Oh, so it's yeah. not out yet? Yeah. Excellent. Well, hopefully a lot of young people now will stop listening to DJs and find... Uh, <laughs> Find Lagwagon and Power Man 5000. Well, I found those <laughs> songs 20 years later anyway. Yeah, you were the biggest metalhead who's now a massive punk fan. Yeah, I didn't like any of those songs back then. Didn't like Millen Colin or uh, Lagwagon or anything like that back when, when Tony Hawk was a thing. Now really? it's all you listen to. Hey? Now it's all you listen That's to. That's all I listen to, yeah. Especially Bad Religion. I fucking love Bad oh, Religion. Oh, yeah, good Bad Religion. Big, yeah. big fan. Yeah. Fucking hell. And what about you two brothers growing up? I imagine you had pretty, plenty of music in the household. Your old man makes guitars, for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah. A l- the, our household was very musical. Um, mum loves good music. Mum doesn't have a musical bone in her body, but she <laughs> she's had one at least twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dad likes good music. He's not good. He can make guitars. He's shit at playing them. They just ask him. He'll, he won't play a guitar for you, but he'll make one. Um, yeah, lots of music in our household. He plays guitar. He does play guitar, but he's shit house. <laughs> yeah, he's, so he's just shy in our about jam guitar sessions. <laughs> <laughs> just sounds. Oh, it sounds good. Come Gary. on, throw him under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's throw him under the bus. Yeah. Hey, just, he sits there and just fucking. Ask Jaden halfway through the song. He's like, What chord is this in? He's <laughs> fucking strumming it away. <laughs> We're playing like fast paced punk rock music. Dad comes in through with his acoustic guitar that he's made at Mayfield and plugs it in and strums away. <laughs> no distortion added. You can see how, hear a high twang over the top of everyone else. It feeds back. It's like, Is this the right key? Nah. <laughs> So have you guys found time to still listen to plenty of music over the last six months since you haven't been able to play? Uh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Sure. And what's, on, what's, what's playing? I've got at the moment, someone gave me for Christmas last year the 100 albums to listen to before you die. Yeah, yeah, have yeah. you seen that list? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was one, one of the Threadgate shared it, didn't it? Yes, yeah. yeah, he did. He did share that. Yeah, so w- I was talking to one of the Fred- or all the Fred Gates about that, actually, yeah. Um, I've been working my way through that, which is pretty good because it gives me a, a different... Um, you know, a wider view on music because Mason will tell you I'm pretty. Uh, <laughs> I get a bit stuck in my ways <laughs> with what I listen to. Like if you show, you know, I want to listen to punk rock and heavy shit. You know, if you put a country music record on my face and like, you know, get lost. But <laughs> so this right. hundred album thing, you know, I listened to the Beach Boys last weekend. Is that new to you? Well, I've listened to them before um, and didn't go much on them, but I listened to a whole Pet Sounds album last week. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone, everyone knows Kokomo's Kokomo. not even a real place. Can you believe it? No, it's make believe, and it's a dog shit song too. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you, do you know what I discovered? Some things I'm like, do you know what? I need to listen to more stuff. Some of the albums on that list, I'm like, I really need to go back and I'll listen to this again. And some of the albums I have listened to again, um, like Rumors, Fleetwood Mac Rumors. That's yeah, a, yeah. A, an amazing album, and I've listened to that. I think it's one of the first two songs on, on the list. So I've listened to that a couple of times since listening to back and listening. Mm-hmm. I need to listen to this kind of stuff more because yeah, I do yeah. like it, but it's out of that punk rock, hard rock genre that I normally listen to. Yeah. But then I listen to Beach Boys and I'm like, I know why I don't fucking listen to the Beach Boys. <laughs> <laughs> it just reaffirmed why I don't listen to it. So you don't like the Beach Boys? I don't like the Beach Boys. No. I started with the Beach Boys. The Beach Boys and Richie Valens were, were my things when I was a little boy, man. Yeah, really? Yeah, we loved it. Loved it. So yeah. I, I, my, my, my grandparents had fucking Buddy Holly and Roy Orbison playing, so I feel, I feel like I lucked out. I done pretty well. Yeah, our house is like, our dad was like... The Eagles. <laughs> no, he, he didn't like the Eagles. <laughs> fucking hell, do you even know your own dad? <laughs> 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 no, 
never had an Eagles album at home. Yeah. Did absolutely. we? Absolutely. Non stop. We don't have a fight here. <laughs> a dad fight. Yeah. We don't have a bro fight here. Um, no, you and I have been listening to a lot of new music lately, though. And yeah. I put mine down to I got Spotify at the start of the year. I was always iTunes. Through right. and through. Yeah, yeah. Which iTunes is good. As in, as in Apple Music or as in sorry. physically buying iTunes? No, no, sorry. Apple Night Music Train Radio is available on both, by the way. <laughs> it is on both, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yes. Links in the bio. But with Apple Music, it doesn't have that, like, play what you were just listening to but sounds like it. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So since getting Spotify, I've heard these songs that, again, were BMX DVDs. Those Johnny Thunders and the Heartbreakers. Yeah. That mm. album's fucking sick. And I forgot about that until I got Spotify. So I was going to touch on that because Spotify... Definitely has its pros and cons. I mean, as as musicians who would like to make make some money from music, Spotify probably doesn't help that because uh, no one's buying CDs anymore. But it's so much easier to find new bands now as opposed to when you're 15 and trying to wait wait for your mate to make you a 79 minute mix CD. Yeah, does it matter though? Like, if the music's out there, does it matter to oh, that? That's the way I think about it too. It, I guess there's two sides of it, I suppose. If a million people listen to a Bin Lid song and didn't pay for it, I'd rather a million people listen to a Bin Lid song and not earn a cent than, you know, a hundred people pay 15 bucks for, for a CD at a, yeah, a gig. Cool. I'd much rather do that. Because, you know, well, at it's, a, day, it's a very punk rock attitude. It's about the music, not the money. But it is, honestly, like, I've got a, I've got a fucking well, job, man. You make millions from wrestling anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's a very lucrative business. Hunt, you're a belt holder, aren't you? I am a belt holder. Champs yeah. on that champ <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got that championship goal. I was really hoping you'd just fucking lift your shirt then to reveal that you were wearing the belt. <laughs> I actually bought the belt with me. Did it's, you? <laughs> no. Nah, I didn't. I should have. I should have. Anyone could have saw my cock. Wrestling, it just got a little bit stiffer. There's a wrestling show excited. on tonight. They're spewing. I can't make it. They haven't got their main event. We'll drink 10 more ten, <laughs> tins and we'll get you there. Yeah. Yeah, I thought we were going. Yeah, we should go there after. I was going to go yell. We're going stuff. to the wrestling. We're going to the wrestling. Where's it, where's We've really done a wrestling show for the for the for the, video, for the uh, YouTube show, man. We um, we went th- to a wrestling where we were going to and we didn't get there. I think you performed. You were probably there. there, man. Yeah. The hardcore wrestling thing. Yeah. Thing? Yeah, I was there. I, pre- I was there. Yeah. Yeah, strippers. And yeah, we all meant to be strippers. there, and then um, they were pole dancers, pole dancers man. Not strippers. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, we meant okay, to be. there. I prefer to be called women. I for one don't judge them by their. Do you know how at the start of this podcast we were saying we're going to say some dumb shit. And regret it later. We should put a pre-warning. Give, give and say, said, oh, we say a lot of things. We <laughs> don't mean it. Said, everyone's going to know that I'm a cunt. And I said, mate, everyone already knows you're a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing to stress about. Yeah, yeah. that's um, hardcore wrestling. That one that we did at uh, Nui Leagues Club. Yeah, yeah that's us. How long that's have you been us. wrestling for? Man, I've only been wrestling since um, March last year. When I first started training. I think my first match was around July. Yeah. Around July last year. But is a wrestling event on tonight. My wife's wrestling still tonight. Oh, so she's, she's out there. Family of wrestlers. Yeah, she she started a bit after me, but she's heaps better than I am. Yeah, she's actually she's a <laughs> <laughs> she's a lot better. Did I say that you two have actually it. you've had a pro match? Sorry, did I say that you two have had a pro? Yeah, match? Yeah, we did one for charity. Yeah, right. We um we raised uh I think one it, one person, which is a friend of ours, wanted to see us wrestle, and we end up you know raising a couple thousand dollars That's for cool. um wires. Uh, after the bushfires. Yeah, yeah, nice. For the mm. koalas. For the koalas, yeah. Nothing like hitting your wife for the koalas, eh? <laughs> <laughs> There's blokes yeah. all around the country doing it, I'm sure. <laughs> so, <Nothing>. so, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll delve into the we'll delve into the bin list. How far are we in? We're 15 minutes in. We're done. <laughs> We're talking about domestic violence. <laughs> This is going to be a good podcast. Did you not listen? It's for charity. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, domestic violence for charities, all right. Hey, anything for charities. Oh, is good. If, you, if you took the sound bite out of that and used it out of contact, <laughs> context, <laughs> fuck. No, no one listens to this fucking thing anyway. <laughs> we um, we will delve pretty deep into the bin lids. Unless they're in Syria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, go back to the bin lids, Lenny. Straight back to bin lids. <laughs> <laughs> for context. That is where we had listeners for some reason on Spotify, it is, right? It is. We had you a fucking know, our first overseas listeners were from fucking so fuck from Syria. They love us. I wish I knew that before yeah, you said that. Yeah. <laughs> do you guys do you guys look at your bin lids streaming figures and see random countries that people are listening? I've looked at it once or twice. I've no. never. I don't know how. Any internationals? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's some internationals in there. Um, New Zealand. But I yeah, think it's right. probably people that have known people from New Zealand. Far away, lit. Yeah, <laughs> not really international, is it? Yeah, it's part of the bubble, man. It's the travel bubble. <laughs> so we'll um, we'll talk about pre bin lids. Obviously, there's just Ace and there's I want to say Dirty Little Rebels. Yep. Mason, what about yourself? 
Oh, I've had a couple of bands. Um, one in like the start of high school. Yeah. I can't even remember the, the name of the band, um, but we did have one song. <laughs> and it pretty much was the same as, is it the Backstreet Boys song? Mm. Incomplete. Um, <laughs> That's Backstreet a fucking Boys. great song. They used, yeah. to, they used to jam out that I shit. didn't know that was a song until we played it in front of Jaden, and Jaden bullied us for about four weeks and the band was over. <laughs> I, I, was, I ended that band. You did. <laughs> 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 they, they were super excited, and Mason came and got me. I was sitting in my room, and it, I was about... I was maybe 17, 16, yeah. Mason's 12, prime, 13. Prime bully age. Yeah, prime bully <laughs> bully little brother age. And he's coming, he's, my band wrote a song, come out, listen to us. And he comes out and the, the hook comes in. And he's like, it goes, incomplete. I was like, get fucked. <laughs> that is a Backstreet Boys song. That's a fucking good Backstreet Boys song, though. Yeah. I've, it's been, what, I've been doing that to you a lot lately, though. Yeah, it's been frustrating yeah, you, me. You get the shits about it. I'm not the shits of you. It's not know, the shits of you, it's the shits of myself. Well, you've got that song that rips off Daryl Braithwaite. Yeah, we do. <laughs> La- last weekend. It doesn't rip off Daryl Braithwaite. Daryl Braithwaite's a bloody legend. Fuck, I'm upset. <laughs> All right. I've upset a wrestler. It, it, rips off, it rips off the people that shout out horses at every fucking gig that you play. As the originals band, you still get that regularly? Yeah. Yep. That's, far, that's absolutely dog shit. Not just, um, not just horses, though. You get uh, ACDC or whatever else. Yeah, right. Barnsley. But most of the time, that's my brother. <laughs> it's just my brother being a fuck me the crowd. Yeah. But the Slayer was the big chant back when fucking I was a kid. When I, was, <laughs> when I, was, I think from the age of about 18 to 25, when I lived at the Cambo, every single metal gig I went to, there was some kind of yelling out to play a Slayer song. Yeah. Play Metallica. Fuck off. Yeah. I, um, so, we mentioned Dirty Little Rebels, we mentioned Just Ace. There's a bit of a Grinspoon tie into all of us here because you, Dirty Little Rebels. Managed by Phil Jemison? Uh, the EP we did was produced. Produced by? Phil Jemison. Obviously, Just Ace, self-explanatory. What's your uh, Grinspoon story, Jay? Played with him once. Played with him once. That was my claim to fame. What was your band called? Gerbil Sex. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> Sick. Like, this was 20 years ago or something, 18 years ago or something. We played a gig with him at the... Uh, the, fuck, the, the uni, Newcastle University and... Barnhill. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, it was meant to be. It got moved to the Brennan Room because wow. because we were playing. They sold What's too the many tickets room? and had to move. Brennan it. Room's the on the room. other side. Because we were playing. Because we were playing. Yeah, they sold too many <laughs> tickets and had to move it. So anyway, we were kids. We were still in high school, so we were fucking excited to play with, with, with fucking Greenspoon, who were massive at the time. So they come off stage. We were backstage watching them, which was a huge, a huge experience for us. And we're waiting there, fucking at least shake hands with them or something. And Phil just puts a fucking towel over his shoulders, puts his head down, and looks at us and just fucks off. <laughs> <laughs> we were just heartbroken little kids. Oh man, that at is least, heartbreaking. At least he walks up to me at the camera, but that's just to try and buy meth off me normally. <laughs> 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 I so seen him once at, uh, at, at a show times. at the small ballroom, and uh, Jess and I went to watch Unwritten Law. Unwritten Law, yeah. and he was. And do you know how you get drum blokes in the crowd shouting out at the roadies when the roadies come out? It was him. And it was some fuck quick, ah, roadie, <laughs> play a song. And like, who the fuck is this idiot? Turn around, it's Jemmo. He's got two VBs in one hand and he's got holding two rum and cokes in the other hand. Yeah. He, he, he bumped past me in like line at the bar and I'm like, if this cunt wasn't Phil Jamison, some cunt would have knocked him out. Yeah, absolutely. These, these stories make me feel better about that groove in the movie year. Oh. <laughs> oh. No. Oh, this story needs to be yeah, told. Tell Give us. Out. Tell us. Oh. Uh, Almost got me it? kicked out of Groove in the Moo. Was that 2017 or 2018? Groove in the Moo? They were playing. Fuck, that was ages ago. I think it was 2018. The one you. Back in the days when you could see live yeah, music. When you could it. touch strangers. We went to Jaden's mate, Joel's house. You I might know jo- Joel Miller. He's from Beresfield. I know the name. Joel. I can't put a face to it. We shared a bus ride together from Joel Miller's house to Soundwave. That's when I first met you. I don't know if you know that. Nope. We were called a bus to Soundwave together in 2011. I, rem- I remember you, but you wouldn't remember me. No. No, no there you go. You. It was from Miller's house. You were already on the bus. John Lamond was the bus driver. Oh, okay. But anyway. Yeah, no, look, look conti- how my eyes are. Yeah, you got no fucking idea. Nothing. Continue on your story, go. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I think it was 2018 Groove the Moon. I think that's when Grinspoon played. And Royal Blood played the same year. It was yeah. really good. Um, I fucking Paul motherfucking Kelly played that year too. I rocked up to your house. We went to Jolie's house. I drank a bottle of rum before Grandma picked us up and went to drive us to Groove the Moon because the trains would shut down or something. Uh, I don't remember anything. 
from that day until about four o'clock when Grinspoon played. <laughs> Everything's a blur. Uh, but Jaden reminded me that it was about 10.30 in the morning, 11 o'clock or whatever. I was like, wait, should I call Jamo? <laughs> Jaden's like, absolutely. Jamo's like, still got Jamo's, Jamo's number in his phone. We'll be, we'll be calling him before the show's over. So we're trying to fucking FaceTime him. We just walk through the ground. It's like, nah, man, he'll answer. Watch, he'll fucking answer. <laughs> Never answer. I woke up with Grogor the next morning. I think he, I don't know. I can't remember too much as well, but I think he answered and hung up straight away, or he didn't answer at all. I reckon he absolutely thought you were chasing freebies. Probably, definitely. We didn't want freebies. We just wanted we just wanted a good yarn. <laughs> well, the, the other thing I've done is it was like a Cambo gig that he was playing at, and it was like tag someone that you would like to see, uh, tag someone who you'd want to take to the Grinspoon gig to get free tickets. And I tagged Phil Jamison's actual <laughs> Facebook page. <laughs> and I got like an immediate like messenger message that said, please remove that post. And I was like, fuck, this is serious, isn't it? So I deleted it. No, I wasn't happy about it. Because they all, a lot of them, is he got a pseudonym or is he using his real name? Is pseudonym the real word? Yeah. 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 Pseudonym, yeah, like a fake, no, he's, fake he, name. It's Phil Jamison on Facebook. Good England. What? And, you got, and you got roused on? Yeah, I got real roused. I don't know, it was very um, professional. I don't know if it was just a... If he's got a, you've probably got an agent or something that acts for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's let's delve into to Bin Lid's some music. Actually, now you guys have written a song that Jay and I would never write because we have no pride for our fathers. But tell us about uh, Dad Fight. <laughs> this is my nice. dad could beat Jay's dad at abandoning children earlier. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> we should uh, we should delve into that a little bit more, actually. Yeah, we will. Get some, get some, let's get us some beers and delve into that. So tell, tell us about that fight. Uh, so uh, we just thought it was a funny concept. Gibbo and I started talking about it at late night at the back of a pub somewhere in some shitty suburb of uh, Newcastle, uh, and we there said, is no shitty suburb in Newcastle. I'll have you know. <laughs> well. <laughs> if we've got a song for you, <laughs> we will debut it today. Uh, so we started talking about how um, it used to be funny when you hear when you're on the playground and you used to stick up for your dad and you say on the playground at school in primary school, my dad could beat your dad in a fight, and we thought that was funny and we started talking to each other like I reckon that my dad could actually beat your dad in a fight, Gibbo, and Gibbo's dad is probably seven foot eight and as a prison guard and my dad's just <laughs> a little bit shorter than me. It's Gary, yeah, it's just Gary, yeah. yeah, but he fucking makes guitars, enjoys a thousand beers That's and amazing. you know. He's a fighter. Just, Lenny, you yeah, might have been the same as Lenny. You might have been the same as me, man. My, my go-to is my uncle will beat your dad. No, see, my, me and my friends used to because we always thought like, oh, fuck, your mum was lame, so we know oh, you're going to go home and fucking suck your dad's dick. That was our insult. <laughs> that was our insult to people, and never got to laugh. But did you ever go through school? school we were very homophobic. Though, so we wouldn't use things. <laughs> like you didn't hear kids at school saying that my dad will beat up your dad. You never oh, heard yeah, that? For sure, that was definitely the thing. Yeah, yeah isn't it? This is fucking funny, dad. man. That's yeah. what I mean about like the colloquialisms of a, of, the of a middle class yeah. Australia. If you can't say in the playground, my dad will flog your dad. It's not an Australian school. Well, before, before, before we listen to it, let's put it on record. Whose dad would beat whose dad? My dad. The funny thing about this is, like, we've we've been at pubs, look, he, and he, I've had serious conversations about this to your mum, and she goes, oh, "Look, I don't know. Gary gets pretty like upset every now and then." <laughs> so when we were kids, we had to we had to do it tough for a couple of years because mum and dad were paying off a bill because dad threw someone through the window of the Nags Head Hotel. Yeah, what's your yeah. fucking dad doing? Yeah, here, tell us a good story. <laughs> we break pretty easy. You can fucking throw. It's <laughs> <laughs> not a very good thing. Has your dad ever abused at a pub? Uh, Dad doesn't really tell me about the fights he's been in. Probably because there's heaps of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he tells you about, yeah, he tells you about the ones he loses. I don't know. I, I, yeah, Dad's a dad, Dad's a prison guard. He's been a prison guard for twenty odd years. He's a screw. He's seen. Some, he's a screw. Well, he was a screw. Then he was in the dog unit, and now he works in the courthouse. And he's basically the last bloke you see before you go to prison. Well, he's a pretty intimidating dude. <laughs> Can I just say that? That's what he loves to do. He's just an intimidating person. I'd like to think that my dad could be. Be in a fight. If whatever my dad tells me is true, he could beat Gibbo's dad in a fight. But the, the older I get, the, the more I realise that my dad's full of shit. <laughs> 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 On that note, let's listen to Dad Fight by Ben Bin- Lid. Sid's dad is uh, Malcolm Naden, by the way. <laughs>
Can I just can I just say that how disillusioned Gibbo is with his dad beating dad, my dad in a fight, or Mason and I dad in the fight. You got the same dad. It's, yeah, for the same dad. Maybe allegedly. Uh, can I? Gibbo rec- told me one time that he could beat Conor McGregor in a fight because Gibbo's got him on reach. <laughs> That's how could, fucking disillusioned he is about what. I don't think I said I could beat him. I think I said I'd have a good shot. Mm, You'd have yeah. a good shot at Conor <laughs> McGregor because he got the reach. That uh, makes well, sense. Grab him by the throat, maybe, and keep him away. Well, with the old just do that thing where you hold his head, hold his forehead, and I think it was after. It was like a. I can't remember what fight it was, but we ended up going and measuring our reach after that fight. But how after tall, you ran at me? Yeah, how tall is Gary though? Well, I reckon Mason. What are you around? Five eleven. Fuck. It's not even six. <laughs> 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 Gary's gonna flog me after this as well. Right? <laughs> yeah. you, but you, get, Gary's the biggest fan of Mason and I. Whatever we do, so we can't bag him too much because he's definitely gonna fucking listen to this. It's not like we can bag Dad out and he won't listen because you'll just. Yeah. Well, let's talk up. Let's talk. Let's talk up the guitars that you're holding because your old man made those, or at least one of them. Yeah, the one that Gibbo's holding. If this is on camera, is, we've got a camera. There will be cameras. Yeah. The one that Gibbo's holding photo. is um, a GVB, which is what Dad calls his guitars. Um, his dad's middle name. Vincent. Vincent. Gary Vincent Brett. Uh, so he made that guitar, and his kind of signature thing is the upside down headstock that you see at the top there. I noticed that when you pulled it out before because it just looked different. Yeah. Bit quirky. Bet your dad couldn't do that, give it. Bit unrealistic. <laughs> bit warped. Yeah, he's taller. Bit warped through <laughs> space time, just like dad is. He's a bit of a strange fellow. Um, yeah, so he made that guitar. He made that one for me. He's got one for himself. He made one for the um, person who taught him to make guitars at, oh, what's the name of the place we should plug them? That's not, it's not it Mark. From Australian. King, Australian guitar, guitar makers. makers or something like that. But is that old mate that plays in Little King? Yes, yeah, it's yeah. Matt from Little, Little yeah, King. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Simmons Guitars. Australian Simmons, guitar that's it. Yeah, yeah. School. Yeah, Australian Mine's guitar making st- school. Yeah. So Dad has made. That's his fourth. It's cute in here. Uh, no, got, third. That's his third. Mine's the fourth on the way. Inside the guitar. So he wasn't doing it when you were younger. No. That would have been a lot. That'd be very convenient for young blokes who was. Well, he's only been doing it for the last guitar. four years, I guess. That's all right. Mm. Uh, he's always played guitar. Yeah. Though. Played guitar when we were younger. Always in the music. That's how I guess we got into music. Also, yeah, Mum's brother was as well. He was always in the music as well. Got into um. That's how I first got into like Kais and stuff like that. The weirder and corn and also weed. I imagine the weird. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, well. Sorry, Uncle. <laughs> let's uh. <laughs> let, let's not assume. <laughs> make an ass out of you and me, Lenny. Uh, now, now I, I'm not done with your dad's. Tell us the. Uh, you, you told me a story about your old man before we went to air. Give that involves a stump <laughs> and a neighbour. Yeah, dad's not the best people person at the best of times. Uh, he tells this story. He was having a beer on the back veranda. Mum was making dinner. He was just listening to his music. And um, this bloke pops his head over the fence. Listen to Kevin Bloody Wilson. Some, yeah, something <laughs> stupid. Fucking slim knackers. It's an actual person. Look him up. Um, but we got like a laneway next to our house. And I was going to say, that is the worst insult for Slim Dusty ever. No, it's oh, Slim, Slim Knackers. Is the, Knackers. the best part about that story is he played in Tembo somewhere and Dad <coughs> watched him and was like, I've got to get a fucking CD. This bloke, he's got a signed CD that says, On your gibbo, Slim <laughs> Knackers. <laughs> <laughs> Dad listened to it the next day and goes, He's like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so yeah, we got a laneway next to our house and um, this bloke pops his airway. He goes, Oh, mate, this is good music. And Dad's drinking a beer. He turns around and goes, Yeah, mate. Turns back around, has a sip of his beer. Blake goes, oh, I haven't heard music like this in years. He goes, Yeah, mate. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Blake fucked off. Next day, Dad gets up, goes down the laneway and goes, What the fuck was this bloke standing on? Finds a stump on the ground. He goes, Fucking hell. Goes and gets an axe. And just fucking starts <laughs> hacking up the axe so no one can stand on it and poke over his bed. <laughs> Not having oh, that. Man. I find that way too funny. <laughs> I don't want any cut talking to me when I'm listening to Slim Knackers. <laughs> <laughs> it's just me, Slim Knackers, in the open road. <laughs> so we've been we've been locked down, well, essentially, sort of ish, you know, for the last six months or so. Have you guys taken advantage of that when it comes to songwriting? Is this, I mean, since you can't really play live or anything like that, have you, have you taken some time to write some new shit for a new album or a new EP? Or we, we've got a bunch of shit, yeah, for sure. We've got um, the so better part. Still get together and, and jam? And yeah, man. 
Yeah. Um, we we try to get together every Sunday anyway, and um, we we're not just the band like we're all. Well, I'm Mason's brother. He's my younger brother, so I hang out with him a lot. But we're all best mates, so it's not just we have to hang out for band practice. We're always around each other anyway, like events that we go to. So and you all follow the Knights too, which helps. <laughs> no, Jaden follows the Tigers. Yeah. I am a night support. I'm a night supporter because I'm a Nova Castrian, but uh, Tigers are anyway, my first. What, what happens when it's Newcastle versus West? What happens then? Well, someone's got to be the villain, man. Someone's got to be the heel. When Newcastle pump West twice in one season, <laughs> yeah. what happens then? Well, I go very, very quiet. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> you don't hear from me Mason and Gibbo on, uh, on Night Train Radio for the rest of the show. Fuck you, Jaden. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be the first Night Train Radio where you hear commentary for the Knights game. We're Pretty much, yeah. So, so, yeah, something different. We're actually we're going to watch the Newcastle Knights game. Uh, if they're playing the, the New Zealand Warriors in, in Tamworth. Uh, yeah. We're, we're going to watch that with, with the boys and uh, have we, a few we, beers. We were here yesterday setting up, and I said, I want to make sure we can watch the Knights game. And then, of course, Gibbo puts in the group chat, we watch the Knights game. We <laughs> yeah, it's standard. But, yeah, we've, we've been writing heaps. Of, we always write. It's constant. Um, because our songs aren't too... I guess not to sell ourselves short, but complicated. It's just like an idea. If you have an idea about something, then that's a song. You know, if it's a silly idea that you hear, which is the best part about it. Like we basically we formed Bin Lids and wrote a whole set in a month. Like the, from the point that we went, we're Bin Lids. Let's be a shit punk rock band. <laughs> we played a gig the next month, yeah, so nothing well, really gets chucked out. Well, our first like no, every no. definitely definitely not. And I don't want to compare it. Because people often compare us to another band that would be, some people would call similar to us that had that blew up about the same time as when we started. So we often got compared to that band, and I'll let you figure that out. To the chats, yeah, <sighs> yeah. Well, why no. Why, why, what you're about to say is it? it? Well, because he's about. I know what he wants to say. I'll say it. So everyone's like, "Oh, so you like the chats?" And it's like, "No, we like the chats, but better." <laughs> but, we're, but we're only better because our, oh, fuck, we're not our better. Songs are smarter. Like they are. The chats are good. They're good for their own thing, but like, it yeah, I think the chats do. They do their thing very well, but yeah, I just don't absolutely. like. I don't like being compared to anybody. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to be compared to somebody, be somebody that is, isn't relevant. Like, I'd hate to be told like you're just doing this because it's 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 current. It's current, yeah. But it's not because it's current because we find it's fun. It's what we talk about. Yeah. It's yeah. when we get around and talk to each other, we talk about like, dumb things that that happens. There's little little bits of society that just, just really funny and make no sense. Well, our band started at three o'clock in the morning playing poker with pasta chips. <laughs> <laughs> well, with dry penne pasta. And Jack said, I'm going to make a band called Bin Lids and played a riff. And then we played a gig three weeks later. It's the best name, by the way. <laughs> I love it. I remember when I, I, I tried to get Just Ace for something and they're like, oh, I think, I think Jaden's got a thing with Bin Lids. I said, what the fuck is Bin Lids? <laughs> and I realize, come to realise it's probably one of the better band names I've heard. <laughs> It doesn't need to make sense, man. Look at Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters is the worst look, bit look at band name. Look at in the corn world. with a K, for fuck's sake. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Have you got this? an old corn documentary. I had it on VHS when I was who younger. Then, who then now? Is that what it is? And they had a competition when the fans could draw their album cover and they had people drawing people eating corn around a dinner table. Oh, yeah, that was 99. That was the Issues album. Yeah, not, right. Not that I know too much about corn or anything. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Corn's a bit of a secret. I reckon people, new metal cops a lot of shit, but Man, fuck those people. I, being, <laughs> being 15 in 2001 was fucking excellent because that's all I wanted to listen to at the time. I, yeah. my, my parents were listening to country and I was like, fuck this shit. Put corn on. <laughs> and they hated it. Yes. I did fuck that. Every day when I wake up. It was like year eight music. <laughs> it was like a project that you had to make like an A3 poster with your favourite band. I did, I did the same. I did corn. Did you? Yeah. What did you do, Mace? I didn't get that. Didn't you? I got I got that. I did Zeppelin. Did you? Yeah. We um we had a we had to I think it might have been English class for some reason. But we had to bring in a song that like represented ourselves and I was like, oh, no. I, said, oh. I said, fuck, I don't know, I just wanted to play something that swears heaps and see if I get in trouble. So I just played break stuff by Limp Biscuit. Yes, sick. <laughs> and, and I got like marked high and I'm like, I just literally played the song with the most swearing I could think of. Yeah. I did um Friends of Ron Bucket Bung for a <laughs> for a, a music <laughs> assessment once. Friends, friends of Ron. Fr friends of Ron. Yeah. Friends of Ron. Jay and I um, enjoy far too much just saying the wrong thing. Yeah. Friends of Ron. Um, what I think Do I it for you. Yeah, okay. For you. <laughs> I called okay, you guys the okay. Bimley. Okay. Have the you other saw day. a Rambo? <laughs> 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 
you know, if you, if Friends anyone other pretty... than Lenny and I saw our text message, our, our text thread, man, we would fucking be in jail or, yeah. or executed. There'd be it's... no saving us from cancel culture. We'd have to kill ourselves. That's oh, awful. Oh, well, it is what it is. It is what it is. That's the song, isn't it? Well, listen, you That's guys the have album some, name. Uh, it is the album name. You guys have got some guitars in your hands, and we are about five minutes away from kickoff. Yep. You want to play us a tune? Yeah, well, we've actually got another um, one of Dad's creations here as well, the little Kahan box over there. It's a box with a snare in it. Doesn't mean that he's a good fighter, just because he's <laughs> that box. <laughs> By the way, just for clarity. Fight. What's What song do you guys want first? Well, mate, you guys... You guys are the you guys are the, uh, the stars here. You do what you want to do. Tell us about what you're going to play, though. Uh, we're going to play the first song that we ever wrote together as a band. Which uh, can I guess? You can guess, yeah, for for sure. Is it one we spoke about before? It's I not, don't know. It's not. It's not pissed off, is it? It's not pissed off. No, pissed off was um, the second album. The first album, new car. The first song new car, of the new first car, album yes. is new car. A lot of the ideas of that album came from a, a good mate of mine, Lockie Welsh. Shout out. Yeah, shout out to Lockie Walsh. He's, he's my housemate at the, for a while. Um, but this song came from, basically, he bought a new Subaru Forester second hand, but it was a piece of shit. It was like, <laughs> so I'm, I'm a mechanic by trade, but it was like three three weeks or something after he bought it, he calls me up. He's like, Gibbo, my fucking engine light's on. Do you know what's wrong with it? I'm like, nah, the fuck, <laughs> do not know what's wrong with your car, mate. But have yeah, this is basically... Have you yourselves bought any shit cars? Uh, yeah, uh, for oh. sure. My yeah. first car was a 1984 Mitsubishi Colt, and it broke down the first day that I drove it. Excellent. <laughs> the first day, the first day I drove out to, I had a girlfriend that lived out at um, Brankston, and Mason and I, we lived in, we grew up in Maitland. Yeah, yeah. So I drove from Rutherford out to Brankston, and it broke down at Lock and Bar, <laughs> which is not that far. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Saying that, it wasn't Maitland. It was Tawara. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm selling That's myself. The downside. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's have a listen to... Are you guys all ready to roll? Yeah, man. Let's have a listen to New Car by Bin Lids. got a new car, baby, I drive it fast I got a new car, maybe I can move the middle class I got a new car, second gear is fucked I got a new car, maybe that's just my sheer luck New car won't start New car Won't go far I got a new car baby She's pretty mint I got a new car maybe You wanna ride it out Yeah! I got a new car The car overheats I got a new car, maybe it's just my shit head. New car won't start. New car won't go far. New car won't go far. Big finish there, Woo! big finish. <laughs> it is fucking good to have live music on the show after it's, a few episodes. It's really different playing that on an acoustic, hey? I've been fucked up a little bit. <laughs> is, is it, do you find it, most of your songs 
Do they not start acoustically like most other? Most people we talk to, a lot of their songs start on an acoustic before moving to the full band deal. Is that different for you guys? Um, sometimes, sometimes that song, no, no, that just started. Gibbo just played that riff, and I'm just okay. That that's in B, and then it goes to an E, so I'm just gonna go B E, and then we'll play that for a bit and go stop. We need to go somewhere else, and we'll go okay. We'll go. Dim, dim, dim. Okay, that's the verse, and then we'll bring it up and do like a bit of a stop thing, and um, because yeah, everything's really simple. It's repetition, repetition, repetition is the the, the core of Bin Lid songs because they're not so much. It's about the song is more about the concept than the actual song itself. The song is about the concept of buying a new car, and the new car isn't very good. <laughs> it's a lemon. It's a lemon. Um, so that's what we repeat. Speaking of lemons, fucking Mason's just throwing beers. Yeah, yeah right. Mason's dropped two oh, beers when I was just telling that. So, yeah, so you're spilling beer. Or <laughs> so it's about just new cars. So we repeat that. So you go, new cars. We made that. That was all in within the space of 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, most yeah. of our songs would start like that. Is this, oh. all, is this all in the shed? Yeah, yeah. in my shed. I saw that set up today. It looks fucking a choice. Oh, you seen the door open up? Yeah, yeah. You need to come through and. Well, I think we're going to come and have a beer there at some point. Yeah, we, definitely. We definitely should um, have some beers and, and maybe a few funny cigarettes in the uh, the bin lid shed. Hey, um, well, we've got Gibbo's having a sleepover tonight, so. <laughs> and I've got nowhere to be. Oh, you got nowhere to be, man. <laughs> and your car's your car's fucked, actually, so My you can't get fucked. home. Yeah, yeah, I'm staying at Gibbo's. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't be there. Well, he's not there. He's so staying at my place. Yeah. <laughs> we call it the rat shed. The rat shed. The rat shed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's a story behind it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah please do. Uh, so th- it's not the original rat shed. The rat shed is uh, an idea rather than my single place. Okay. Right. Uh, when Mason and I grew up, it was uh, in Talara in Maitland, and uh, we had pet snakes when we were kids. Had a co- of course you did. Yeah, we had a couple of pet snakes and pets uh, snakes. We, when we put them into the, uh, into the shed, because that's where they lived, at uh, mum and dad's house, because mum would not have a bar of it, have it in the house, Put them in the shed and all the mice that had obviously lived in there for years and years started freaking the fuck out. So you'd find mice everywhere, like trying to run away. So not, not mice that you bought to feed them, just mice that were in there. No, I mean wild mice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wild mice. The worst kind of mice. The worst kind of mouse. Um, Convenient though. Sorry? Convenient that there was that many mice there. Yeah. Mice. Um, but they used to take off. So <laughs> used to <laughs> mouses. Used to find mouse. mice taking off, trying to pieces. exit. Because as soon as we put them in, you'd find them trying to run away and run. Yeah, diff- yeah. They used to go in different parts of... They used to come into the house because we realised, oh, this is where they live. They lived in the shed. Yeah, yeah. The, the snakes in there, so it got the nickname the rat, the rat shed because it was rats as well. Yeah, well, it sounds like the place to be. Is the new one full of rats? Because I'm not no, there. The r- new one is not full of rats. <laughs> I haven't found anything. Maybe I you might get some red back spiders. <laughs> I've got to ask: having a snake as a pet, I've never understood. Like a lot of people do it. Four of them. Four. We had four. Why? I don't get it. Like you They're can't. Very they, don't, they, don't fetch a, they don't fetch a ball. They don't. You can't pat them. You can't. You can. Them. You're just describing cats. <coughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at least a cat will come up and pretend to love you to get a feed. When it wants you. food, yeah. A yeah. snake will just eat you. That's what I. That's what I like about um, about snakes. Yeah. Is the, is the fact that. They're not domesticated. You've got this wild killing machine that, that lives with you. And it's also, that, like in some cultures, that snakes are viewed as demons because they're just these soulless creatures. And like have one of two people on Suicide Watch after this. Ha- ha- have one of, one of them as a pet is, is fucking cool. Our I snakes think. also didn't bite all the time. They, <laughs> <laughs> they, they I don't think any snake bites all the time. No, most of the time it's just headbutt, done. and it headbutt you, like with mouth closed. If it didn't like you, it'd headbutt you. Yeah, and, then if, and then if you kept going, it'd bite you. I'd only been how, long, how many times did you get bitten? Uh, only once. Yeah, I only got bitten once. We had them for years and years. I got bitten once. Well, no, fuck that. I'm still not getting a bit. You know what's the worst pet you've ever had? Uh, well, <laughs> cat I wasn't his. Yeah, I've had some cats that weren't mine the last couple of months. <laughs> nah, well, <laughs> nah, I've had good dogs, mainly. Have they ever headbutted you or bitten you? Uh, bitten me, yes. Have they ever scared the fuck out of all the rats in the house? Uh, no, no rats. Well, there you go, snakes. Snake got cool stories about... Many, uh, dogs bite you more than a snake would. Mm. I would say I've been bitten by more dogs than snakes. Yeah, yeah. see? Snakes are, are, snakes are But no harmless. dog carries fucking venom. <laughs> Neither did our snakes, though. No, but the, wor- the worst dog I've had... Cause <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Because 
dad was a screw, but he went to the dog unit. So Are you bragging again? The first dog he got, <laughs> they could, the dog would flog whatever. Jayden. So you need a dog to make the fight. <laughs> Hang on, can we just say that Jaden's dad and Mason's dad, same dad, they have a dog in a no. shit house. Oh, oh, shit and house. any dog that I've ever had could flog that dog. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I'm going to no, ba- back that up. Yeah. Honestly, that's Roosters playing Broncos last night. You'd put a bet on that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now nah, the first dog Dad got, it was like a fucking, they found it tied to the fence and they were like, yeah, this would be a good fucking attack dog. It was a German Shepherd. Yeah. And that was Dad's first dog. So like, we had to give up our puppy that we just got because they can't have mixed dogs, like non-working dogs at home. And we got this dog and it was like, yeah, don't go near it, Jack. I was like nine. I was like, come here. And it just fucking, Took your hand off? Yeah, just eat you. <laughs> wasn't a very happy dog. Well, we've got kickoff in the Knights game. Yep. And I've just fucking lost me multi. Anyway, anyway. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this game. Can we just talk about what I said about before about Bin Lid songs come from concepts? That's one of the things that we have written down in our notebook of things to talk about. About as a song called You Fuck Me Multi. Well, Because that gets spoken about so players. much, man. <laughs> I think it was you, Mason. It was that footy player coming off the field at half time and just some bloke in the crowd going, You fuck me, multi. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm out. This is bullshit. Uh, so you guys are all pretty big footy fans as well. Um, we spoke about grand finals before. You went to one, I believe. Yeah, uh, Mason and I went to the 2005 Tigers versus Cowboys grand final. The and one and only time I'll ever wear Tigers gear. Because I didn't go for the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck the Cowboys. So you guys went, like, went for the Tigers because because you're old man, right? Yeah, yeah. old man. Yeah, from some Sydney. Old man's family's from Sydney. What was first, Bal- Balmain or Newcastle for you? Uh, for me, it was Newcastle because, you know, mum's, we lived in Newcastle from everywhere around us was, um, you know, red and blue. So I went for Newcastle and it was a kind of a, I guess it's a, you know, and going against the grain thing because all of my mates went for Newcastle that I went to school with. And this is in primary school. Mm. Everyone went for Newcastle. Newcastle's all around you. And I was like, you know what? Dad goes to Tigers. I'm going to go for Tigers. So I went for Tigers as well. Yeah. Punk, a there's that punk rock town. attitude again. It used to be a thing around town, though. Like you had to go for Newcastle if you were from Newcastle. If you wore a, a Manly jersey or a fucking Bulldogs yeah. or whatever, like you, you, were, you were given shit. But now it's everywhere. Everyone goes for everyone. Yeah, I but in, in, in retrospect, Jay, right? that's the way it should be, though. I think you should I go for your town. Soft, I, so I, do I. I, I, I think I you should go for your town. I always had a soft spot for Manly because Jeff Tooby had long hair, and I, as a young kid, and I liked rock bands. I'm like, yeah, yeah. had long, long hair. hair until Mad Dog stomped it off. <laughs> <laughs> Ninety-seven grand final, baby. Yeah, yeah. but you're here in the night shorts. When did you get into Nui? Uh, I loved footy as a kid. Dad, so Dad goes for Balmain as well, and Mum goes for Eels. So I went for both of those teams as a young kid. I fell out of footy when I was like a teenager, and just. Didn't watch games, didn't really like it, didn't follow it at all. And then I moved to Newcastle for uni and I went to a couple of games. I was like, nah, this is fucking cool, isn't it? The attitude of some people around rugby league turns people off too, though. Yeah. Which is unfortunate. Massively. Like, I was, I was a skate park rat, so there's always, there is that kind of rift between. Like, there's defi- and, well, yeah, there's a yeah. definitely rift between, like, surf skaters and, yeah. like, footy. And One like, thing I've always found very bizarre is... Being someone who enjoys football, and obviously, I guess I, I lean more towards the, the music scene. Ah, oh, fuck! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that was a, that was no, a warrior's no, try for the people <laughs> listening at home. I, that's that's what that fucked my multi by forty seven seconds. <laughs> so I'm furious. But it always it's always weird to me that people from the football scene or people from a sports scene will go, oh, who cares? It's just a gig. And then from people from the music scene, they go, who cares? It's just a game of football. They like it. they put down the the. The emotion that that can bring to someone Absolutely. who enjoys the other thing. Absolutely, yeah. Do what thou wilt, you know, Alistair Crawley. Yeah. You should just, you know, if, if you like something, you shouldn't be like, I, I don't like that because I'm in this scene. Yeah, yeah. That's fucking bullshit. I'm really passionate about that. I try all different types of things and I'm not going to, you know, be subjected to one line. Yeah, yeah. I, I played in the school band and learned trumpet. I try to learn trumpet anyway. Yeah, yeah. I'm no good at it. But I also, you know, at, at one point I captained the rugby league team. I wasn't good. I'm not, I wasn't even good at rugby league, but, you know. Didn't you mainly play the rusty trombone? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, Jack of all trades. Uh, oh, I missed it. No. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that's that. the thing is because your mates, your footy mates would be like, oh, your f- fucking muso yeah, yeah. mates and your muso mates are like, oh, fucking dumbass footy players. Yeah, yeah. Well, why don't we have a middle ground? Why can't people just not be cunts and get along with each here, other? The middle, like, the middle ground's here. Yeah, yeah, the middle ground is here. Yeah, you got to make... Oh. It's good, though, that when you get older, you just you somehow just fucking 
like gravitate towards people. Like I've only known you, Lenny, for like I don't know, better part of six months, and then you start talking about corn and how good corn was, and I was like, I fucking loved corn. It's like. <laughs> You, know what I mean? like you just find people yeah, that you, you just find people that you like hanging out with. It's I, fucking easy. I um I had to recently here's a little insight into to my youth. I had to recently update my bank password because they're like, do you know your password? Are you, about, pass- that. Are you about to tell us everything? I'm about to tell you what it used to be, so it's useless <laughs> now. <laughs> but I went in there and I had to do something. They're like, oh, okay, you've got, you've got a password on this account. Do you know what it is? And I said, fuck, I don't know. I said this up when I was 15, and they said, um, it's a word. I said, well, I mean, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else, genius? They said, it's not spelt like it should be. I said, is it fucking corn with a K? And they went, yes, it is. <laughs> so, so at 15, when I had to set up a bank password, I chose fucking corn with a K. Yes. Yeah, right. That's, That's cool. mad. <laughs> no, it's that not. is cool. It's fucking lame as <laughs> shit. Now, we mentioned the nights, obviously. I let you guys have a bit of a sneak peek of who we're talking to in a couple of weeks. Jay's going to do a piss. We're talking to the... the Wonderful Robbie O'Davis in a couple of years, and we're hoping that we're going to play him a sneak peek of a song you guys have written. Do you want to tell us about 97? Yeah. <laughs> I'll fucking love to tell you about 97. <laughs> Please do. We will. Uh, Mason, you haven't spoken much. Tell no, us about 97. Know, I'm right. Oh, oh, don't, don't start pinning shit on me. He's embarrassed because he's got fucking pissed down his <laughs> <laughs> This is that thing, you know, when you're like, why doesn't the drummer get to talk? It's always the singer that talks all the time. Because you don't talk any Man just fucking say What's Mason the song about Mason wasn't born in 97 That's why Yeah it's because I was a year old <laughs> you really remember it How good was it about Mason Fucking good <laughs> year wasn't it you, right. were just, you, you were just sleeping <laughs> Eating and sucking tits You were fucking <laughs> I was living the dream <laughs> Alright Gibbo What's 97 97 is uh, Obviously Nights vs Manly And Nights 1 It was a uh, It was a You know a Turning point in Newcastle's New, history Newcastle was In Um What's the word you would say? We, we needed it, basically. We're in dire straits. Yeah, dire straits. I don't... We needed that. It, and we don't remember it as it, as it happening because uh, I was too young. Yeah. But it's right very... On, no, right it's still nostalgic, though. Yeah, it's yeah. still... People talk about it. I played footy a couple of years ago and our manager was this... Um, that managed my football club was the same manager who managed not the Knights in 97. Mm-hmm. Gary Callahan, his name is. Name dropper. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> older fella... Um, and the way that he talks about it with such passion yeah. is just absolutely fucking unbelievable. Do you, like, remember, do you and remember going I to, just, to school the Monday after it happened? Yep. And yep. everyone just being absolutely ballistic, yep. red and blue hair yep. and all that kind of shit? Yep. See, that's sick. I wish, because I lived, I grew up, I would have been Grafton at that point. I grew yep. up in Grafton. Um, but that would have been fucking sick. That would have been so cool. We didn't have anything like that in Grafton. We went down to the local takeaway shop um, in, where were we? I think we, I thought we, you were singing one of your songs. No, <laughs> we went down to uh, we we went to uh, Grandma and Granddad's house because Granddad was a uh, manly supporter. Bloody God, love him! <laughs> and we went to get fish and chips from the local takeaway shop in Newcastle um, area, and the whole takeaway shop was just red and blue. It was yeah, fucking amazing. The the vibe in the whole area, and you go to school and the teachers were pumped about it, and the, the students were pumped about it. Yeah. And everywhere you went was just red and blue, and it was just the most amazing thing. That you said you were six. Yeah. So you were in primary school. You would have been high school. Thirteen. Yeah, I was there, man. He, oh, you're you know, at the game. It was the 97 grand final. Yeah, it was <coughs> awesome. Well, you're the you're the expert. Tell us about it. Oh, Davis scored that try when he done that fucking. <laughs> Uh, right in front Which of no us. one could see because no we're on audio. <laughs> <laughs> they know what just, I'm talking about. Yeah, that like was awesome, up. man. It was, it was a great experience. Actually, the 97 <laughs> grand final, as silly as it may sound, is one of my one of my top five memories of, of all time. You know, I got married, had a couple of kids, and done a couple of other things. And but the 97 grand final, yeah, is definitely trumps all of that. It, it <laughs> fucking does. The feeling around town was huge. I mean, you guys were a bit younger, so you might not remember, but it was. Everyone was so proud to be in Nova Castro. Yeah, when the night's one which is sick. It was great. It was awesome, and and you don't get that now. It's not, it's not like it was when you get to a night's game. The, 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 that same feeling of, of pride of place isn't yeah isn't there anymore. And I guess it's got a lot to do with the game itself, where there's you know, a lot of trades from from players from out of state or out of town that play yeah. for your town. And whereas in '97, you had a lot of local blokes who played that yeah. game for that town. And it's like this is this sounds a bit. Fucking old, old style of it. <laughs> Rugby league used to be a working man's game, yeah, didn't man. it? You know, it's a blue-collar sport. 
and blokes, bricklayers used to play for Newtown and, mm-hmm. And it's such a shit movie, but the final winter, the final winter is such a, a shit movie, movie, man. Dude, but the yeah, concept, it's like a, it's a the concept film. of the final, the final winter, and old mate, he just that works. Movie a, is incredible. He just works a bricklaying job, and he's part, part of the old school. You know, he's just a, he just goes there and does his job, and he's he gets like, in a like, bit like, of beef. And I don't agree with like, you. Don't, shouldn't punch on in a game of football. That's fucking ridiculous. That dude played for but, Manly, you know. The actual actor. Yeah, the actor. He played for Manly. Yeah, He's right. He's now a commentator on, Ch- on uh, Fox Teller, I think, or he was for a while. Yeah, he played Jock Ross in the um, the bikey show, uh, too. Underbelly, wasn't it? Yeah, un- there's an underbelly biker one yeah. as well, but he played Jock Ross. He was a commie so, man, commentary. The yeah. final winter, fuck it, I think it was that was a great well, movie. Matty Johns was, was great in that movie, I yeah. thought. Is he a commentator? Hey? Yeah. To be com- well, well, I don't think, think Matty Johns no, no, is great. No, no, that was <laughs> Matty. Matty, <laughs> Matty, Matty, Matty is subpar. I Matty think it was Jones a poorly executed a movie, in, but a uh, great concept. Arn Doe movie. Oh right, okay. That fucking stupid. See, yeah, I've that seen, was no good. I've but seen the, three movies in my life. So I don't know what the fuck. That's, that's the thing is that rugby league used to be a, a working man's game, and, and it used to be like you you grew up in your town, you played for your town, and you drank tinnies at halftime. And you drank yeah. Well, like I'm not about that. Like, if you're playing a professional sport, you you're not drinking tinnies at half time. Where we differ. <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to you want to play to the the best of your ability, but it used to just be, you know, the, the elite sports was the, were sorry, the elite sports were yeah, tennis and, and cricket was a gentleman's game, and but rugby league was always about, you know, it was as a game for the people. It was um, a dirty game. Yeah. And why do yeah. we think '97 outshines 2001 so much? Uh, I think it was because it was the first grand final, and after the the earthquake and our BH, song BHP shutting down, and yeah, yeah, yeah our song talks about that. Well, like, it, like I've but I didn't live here, but like I've I've heard on, fuck on they Maddie, score again on the Matty John no, show or something be, like that. Yeah. It was like Joey Johns went into the the lockers at fucking half time and was like, "We need to do this not not for us. It's not for Newcastle Knights. It's for the people." And like yeah. you hear that sort of shit, and you're like. I grew up in Port Macquarie, which is this old person. We talk about retirement town, and there's no camaraderie about the town. There's no one going like Port Macquarie. Let's get um, out of it. In that in that same podcast, <laughs> he started so. talking about like there, there wasn't a dry there wasn't a dry um, Port, Mac, eye in the Port, house. Yeah. He talked about MG, and MG was like the guy that you know, wasn't about that, and even he had a bit of a tear in his eye, or not a tear in his eye, but pumped to fucking do the thing. But that's so sick. Like, I've, that's, I've just for, for me, it's the my memory is the sight of. Um, Harrigan just going absolutely mental on the sidelines oh, yeah. when, when Albert goes over. That's that's the. I'm, I'm sure he was on the side. I just got goosebumps. I'm not even <laughs> fucking kidding you. <laughs> but for me, that's the memory. I, I distinctly remember. I think Paul Vaught was like, "Oh yeah," like that kind of thing. I just remember Harrigan going absolutely nuts, and, the, and I was, I was 11, and I was just fucking. Like, oh, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. It was incredible. And like I said, the aftermath was was fucking awesome. The parade through town. Yeah, parade. man. The houses, I went for a piss earlier, I don't know if you guys spoke about this, the houses painted red and blue. Yeah, we did, yeah. You did? Yeah, yeah. Man, it was fucking incredible. The whole town got into it. It was, yeah. it was awesome. So, uh, that one in Sandgate was red and blue till yeah. the fucking four years ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Talk about clinging. What was the other one? Katara, wasn't it? I remember I my best mate that I met like in year 11, uh, he grew up in Newcastle and he was here for the grand final and I was like, what was it like, man? After I moved to New I got all like pride, Newcastle pride about it. <laughs> And he was like, oh, dude, it was hilarious. Like, we watched it on the TV. And then Dad just looked at everyone. He's got, like, fucking four brothers, two sisters. He's like, looked at everyone. And Dad just goes, right, everyone get in the car. We've got to go check this out. <laughs> <laughs> everyone just got in the car and drove down Newcastle. And just had a I, look if if I lived in a time machine, there's two moments in history that I reckon I would go back to. Or maybe three moments in history. One of them would be Nirvana at Reading Festival. Reading Festival. Or Nirvana Unplugged. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, in, in New York The third one Would be the Mad Monday Of New- <laughs> Newcastle 97 I want to meet the, I want to meet uh, the guy that Not the game up. I don't want to beat the game I want to no, beat no, that no. Mad Monday I want to meet the guy That hooked up Matthew Johns In that post interview <laughs> 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 Whatever the kid That Matt Johns was <laughs> That's in the song too <laughs> Is it? Yeah Well we better have a listen soon If fucking Hubert gets go. back From doing it <laughs> Well that's in the well, song That's one of the ones That we have in this um, Lockdown period of, of songwriting We've got heaps yeah, yeah. But heaps of stuff That we play around with But they're always half written Because Like I said the, the, Our songs come with concepts What we do is We'll Yeah Mason will have an idea Or Jack will have an idea Or I'll have an idea And we'll just write it down In a book And it would be like 97 grand final And that's the idea yeah, And right. then we'll just Think of a Tune And play the tune And I'll just talk over the top of it yeah, And yeah. when 
and, and, and almost mumble and I'll mumble things and go, okay, that rhymed or that made sense or that fit in with, with, with the song or that fit in with the flow of the song, that's in the song now. Yeah, nice. Um, and what you have to be careful of is, you know, saying with the same, same structure or the same verse. We repeat a lot of things and that's yeah. for a reason. People have said, you, know, you repeat verses and you repeat choruses mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that. That's intentional. You know, well, it's that's, like, we we know that's that the key to a catchy is like, the key to a pop song, I guess, is is repetition. That's what gets stuck in people's heads. That's, yeah. what, make, that's what makes people listen to it over and over again. We're not trying to be tall. Yeah, <laughs> <Thanks Chuck laughs> for that. Well, every, every album we've had, we've had to cull songs to make the album. Like we've always had too many songs to make the album, so we've gone okay. Like this, we've got too many of this type of song. We'll change that, make that the next album. Not a bad problem to have. No, it's not. It's not. It's help, helpful when Jaden writes about thirty songs a week. So <laughs> before we delve into <laughs> to ninety seven, the uh, is it called ninety seven? The yeah, it's called ninety ninety seven. Can I just say full credit to Andrew Johns for doing all that stuff? When people say he's a drug cheat, all this kind of shit. Oh, God. yeah. This is a two hour podcast. A drug cheat. Here's what I'm saying. Pingers don't help you perform. Here's what I'm saying. When I Let have you, done pingers in my time, <laughs> I've pissed in the hallway because I couldn't find the toilet. <laughs> now, for him to be on pingers and win the 97 grand final, that counts on a drug sheet. He deserves two statues after doing that, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Jay? I totally agree. Wholeheartedly agree with you, my friend. It's, uh, I, it was a massive pothead as well. I smoked weed like, like a chimney. and Nights have just gone over, by it, the way. Yay! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Oh, it's got... going to the bunker. Fucking oh. hell. Yeah, on field try, though. Of course. Oops, the bunker's got to go. The bunker's <laughs> got to go. What do you guys think? Oh, you know, I, 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 I want an opinion. Wait, wait, wait. I want, an, I want an opinion, actually. That, that fucking orange jersey they wear every once in a while. What do you, well, you love it. It looks like the fucking Tigers. The miners' jersey? Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing about, like, promoting capitalism on the rugby league field. Thank <laughs> <laughs> <Like> you. <it's> fucked. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, take that what you will. No, I'm not a fan. Fuck that. <laughs> it's the ugliest fucking gym yeah. in the world. You, Promote capitalism and ruining the environment. <laughs> what do you, After what do you, well, not not. Hey, miners do a good job. It's not their fucking fault. But like to yeah. And you moving on back to football. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. You, you, what do you what do you, collective argument that often happens is the thoughts on the the set restart and the captain's challenge. How do you think it's made change the game? Oh, it's oh, big fan. Yeah, yeah, me too. Makes it heaps bigger. Set restart's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And the challenge. Uh, I think it's probably I like it because it leaves it up to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because uh, I, I like the yeah, when they bought it when they bought it in with oh, cricket yes. as well. Mm-hmm. When they bought it in with cricket as well, um, uh, I, I liked it as yeah, well. Yeah. The captain's challenge, so I thought it was a great idea for rugby league. Yeah, yeah, cool for sure. Well, Losing no- a referee, adding a challenge, I think it's good. There was none of that shit in '97, but we still won anyway. Fuck you, Manly. <laughs> Fuck you, every other team that we played that year. Let's listen to 97 by Ben Lids. Whenever you're ready. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think I, I'm just going to do it by myself and my boys. Oh, yeah, you're right. You can do it by yourself. Get your guitar, give it. We'll all no, just, no, we'll all just fuck off then. Yeah. No. Are I we going to do, do two guitars or not? Two so. guitars would be good. Uh-oh. But it's easier for these guys to set it up, that's all. No, you can use the two if you want, man. This isn't getting cut. You get the second guitar. Uh, oh, so you're playing. <laughs> Alright, so Mason's yeah, playing guitar. Alright, cool, 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 cool. I'll just move my mic over here. No, I'm not doing anything. You're not doing anything? Alright, we're good, Sid. Sure. We're good. We're good. Alright. Do you want me to play guitar? If you, yeah. Oh, it's jump on there, though. No, 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 no you feel it. Jump on. We started already. Knew we in the 90s, it was no place to be Job loss from the closure of BHP Needed a kick up, something to cheer 1997 was a bloody good year Super League war had made us mad The Rio Tinto strike, it was pretty bad We needed that kick up, something to cheer 1997 was a bloody good year 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 Nui and Barbage 
we're getting some sun Silver chest freak show went to number one Golden Iron Doom came out on Nintendo 1997 it was better than Lego The week coming up, Manly did shout Things are looking bad with our seven out But then he stood up, quite paranormal Nothing could stop the eighth immortal 1997 was a bloody good year 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 It was like nothing else, it was one of a kind Joey picked it up and he went down the blind Inside to Albert, Manly did sneer 1997 was a fucking good year 1997 was a bloody 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 good year Excellent. Ben Libs with 97. You're on Night Train Radio with Jay and Lenny. Dude, that was fucking excellent, man. If that doesn't get played on Channel 9, I'm blowing up. Fuck Channel 9. <laughs> it's like a second debut. I don't even have an antenna. Second yeah, time we played that live. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the first time we played that live, we played it as a local uh, motorcycle club, like a charity motorcycle club in Newcastle, uh, Knights MC. Yeah, right. And we, play, <laughs> we played it at their clubhouse gig. We to rock- go down. Well, we rocked up. We were like, Knights <laughs> MC, so we rocked up wearing Knights jerseys. <laughs> well, I love we it, got, boys. <laughs> we didn't know how that was going down. We rocked up in a bunch of bikey dudes. And we're like, let's wear Knights jerseys and say we got the wrong memo. <laughs> but they thought it was funny, which was great. And we didn't die. Get bashed up. Well, that, that helps. I, um, I ended up at a, at a clubhouse after a night out in Hamilton one night. And I, the fact that I made it out alive... Surprises me to this day. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, these dudes are just like a charity cup. They do a lot for community. Oh, so, right, okay. yeah, they're really good dudes. That's cool. That's Shout cool. out, Knights MC. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, the footy's playing in the background. We might try and not talk about that too much, though. Yeah. Nah. Um, playing. Go! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Is he over? <laughs> I don't know. Is he over? Yeah, it's P. He seemed very over. Oh. He doesn't seem too happy about no, it. No, he man. doesn't look confident. Oh, fuck it. Kiss your uh. jersey again. <laughs> <laughs> I had coffee with Pierce. I had coffee with that was a cool moment, weekend. though. Yeah, that, that, you that had coffee? Yeah, that. I had coffee with Pierce the other weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it was, was at Blue Door and he was there, but I was also there. So. Fuck yeah, that's good. <laughs> that counts. No, no. That counts. I went to Guns N' Roses with Chris Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> I like this story. Huh? I like that story. You heard it, have you? Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Uh, you and your Play, playing, uh, playing gigs around Nui Do you guys find that you've got venues that you prefer over others? Um, yeah, definitely yeah, Go well, on, name drop Last in the Hamo stage, for sure It's Playing the music that we play in Newcastle is good Like we, I've played in other bands around Nui And Jade and you have too But um, Mason, have you played bands? Oh, look, <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> to put it simple, no. Nah. Do you guys find that there are venues that, that you do find a more consistent crowd, whether they're there for you or not? Do you find that there is no consistency whatsoever in, in live music? No, there's no consistency. No. But the last, the last is number one for me, and that's just because the the dance floor, like or like the area where you watch, is small. So, and well, you'll be glad. Well, to know and people it people walk through and they. They just have to watch you. Like, they can't walk through and go anywhere else. They have to walk in and go, oh, fuck, this band is cool or shit. Yeah. I'm I go agree on that. For now. Also, like, Hamo Stage, just because I can do, go do karaoke afterwards. <laughs> That's, yeah. <laughs> That's 100%. also a big factor. Yeah. Mm. We, the Stag and uh, Hunter. We, we've booked more than a few shows. Stag and Hunter is, is also real good. Stag and Hunter sound is fucking Yeah, phenomenal. shout out to Collett, the Stag and Hunter. Our, um, yeah. our, our album release, the second album release that Lenny, you organised, we did for Music yeah, yeah, for the yeah, Mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That was that was a great gig. They had an aircon there. The sound. Yeah, Mason. <laughs> Mason installed the aircon there. I remember Shout out that Coles refrigeration. <laughs> <laughs> But the, big, the issue I find at the stag uh, is that they've got they've got no steps. They've got um, milk crates to get up onto the stage. Yeah. Like, and the first time I booked a show there, I got called up to, to do some talking, and I was already well and truly fucked up beyond belief. I was absolutely shit-faced. And then <clears throat> I'm like, oh, no, I'm done, whatever bands are on. And then I look down, I'm like, there's just a milk crate there, and I'm a, I'm a big fat dude, so this, let's see how this goes. I've just pulled foot down. Foot's gone through the car. And I'm just like... <laughs> I just kept walking with the fucking milk crate around me leg around the stag. But <laughs> other than that, other than that, it's a fantastic venue. I can't remember what stag gig it was, but we just finished playing Fuckwits, which has like a like a all harmonious like tune, like whoa, whoa, oh. yeah. And we were sing, like we just finished playing it, and then the next song we're getting Benny up on stage, Benny Threadgate. Yeah, and he get on he got on stage and he smashed a schooner glass and <laughs> smashed all over the dance floor as he was getting on the stage and then just some punter in the crowd just goes, well, <laughs> 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 I think the best incident I've seen at the Stag, uh, Mick Pfeffy, who was on two weeks ago oh, when Feff. when the Delta Lions played, he um he put all his gear down and because they had all their shit up there, it was quite tight. And he's managed to avoid everything getting off stage. And as he's gone to jump down, his foot's caught a microphone lead. Oh. And just brought a stand in the mic and fucking brought him down with it. And they all just hit the deck. It was incredible. So in Sydney, we broke a table. We broke that table when that band was on. Full fuck, two tables, glasses, everything. Who did? At the Red Bar in Sydney. <laughs> we did. Yeah. yeah, in Glebe, man. In yeah. Glebe, right? Remember, the main street me, in Glebe. You to, me and you went to sit on that oh, table, right, snap yeah. two tables, glasses, everything. While was a and I was on. driving over there. Yeah. yeah. No, I was blind. It was yeah. basically was a blind. cocktail bar, and they, we got booked to play at this cocktail bar, and we went upstairs, and the owner, the, the, the owner, I guess the publican, yeah, yeah. was like, oh, well, this is, you know, this is a thing at a bar, like, this is the drum kit provided, and it was like this cocktail... <laughs> <laughs> this cocktail kid and we're like, Are we meant to fucking be here? I remember what, what Have they got the right bin lids? Is there some other <laughs> fucking <laughs> jazz band? Yeah, Aussie hip hop downstairs, wasn't it? it was yeah, like that a, was no, fucking cool no, though. It was slam poetry. Was it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That'd be slam awesome. poetry. It was I'll, sick. I was late to go on stage because I'm down there fucking rocking out to this slam poetry. Sat <laughs> yeah, down in a little booth sick. by myself. <laughs> yeah. I, I ended up at the station on Thursday night, hip hop night one night after taking a bit of acid. Yeah, and it was <laughs> that honestly, wasn't accidental, huh? That doesn't sound like accidental. W- was it? Was it hip hop night though? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know. If, I don't even know if I was at the stage. Right <laughs> he didn't leave his bedroom. No, I haven't left home. We've got. You mentioned Benny before. Mm. Now we've got a question. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> we've got, I've got a question from anonymous. Hey boys, really big fan of a couple of your songs. Why is Can't it Benny? Is it Benny? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can't get enough about that one about being. Is this home. legit? We've actually got a we've actually got a question. I'll let you read it. You're better. No, no, no. Yeah. I, 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 I can't it. read. I'm retarded. You can read I just it. say Benny's going to be upset that he's not here? Hey, can I just say Benny's going to be upset? Benny's going to be spewing. Yeah, he's he's going to be very upset. Just read from. We hey. always forget to call him hey. up. Just read from. Hey guys. Hey boys. Hey boys. Really big fan of. Hey boys, really big fan of a couple of your songs. Can't get enough of that one about being home among the gum trees. Such a good song. Such a good songwriting. <laughs> you developed a bit of cult following in New Year. Nah, you do it. You do. I've, had, I've had 18 beers. You developed a bit of a cult. You use a microphone. You developed a bit yeah. of a cult following in New Year. And was just wondering how much of that can be attributed to Benny. Do you think his blazing jaw harping is the reason you guys have become what you are? Thanks, thanks again, Anonymous. That's definitely fucking Alex or Josh. Josh. It's Josh, yeah. It's <laughs> I remember the first time, I think it was the first time I saw you guys, yeah. and I knew of the tune, obviously Benny got stoned, and I saw this dude walk in and I went, fucking hell, this cunt is stoned as shit. <laughs> yeah. And you guys got him up and I went, oh. <laughs> makes <laughs> sense. It all makes sense now. Um, th- this is a touchy subject, man, because I don't want to make it feel like I'm making fun of him. Um, I'm not trying to make, we're not trying to make fun of Benny. Benny's a really nice dude, but it's just so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny well, that this a- dude lives his, lives his life like that. It's That's how he lives his making, life. It's similar to me making jokes about Jay's suicide attempts. You're not, you're not making fun of him. Yeah. So you're just, yeah. You're making, you embrace it. Yeah, you're making, look, you're embrace making the drugs. Situation. Embrace the suicide. It's all part of life. <laughs> <laughs> or death. Whatever, however you look at it. Yeah. Um, I always said, I've got a, um, 
a song that I wrote. It wasn't for Billy. This is a song that I just wrote, and it was like uh, I spend most of my time living in my own little world because the real world's not that interesting. And I think that is a pretty good analogy for Benny too. Benny just does what Benny wants to do. Every time I've seen him, he's not having a bad time. No, no. And it's hard to argue with that. Never seen him no, but sad. whenever Benny goes somewhere, it's like he has to go to childcare. Like someone <laughs> has to take care of him. Yeah, Benny duties. We have a thing. We have a roster. We now. have a thing that we've got a roster an Excel someone spreadsheet. Someone has to take care of him. <laughs> Sounds like Marnie Jude. We dropped him off at the train station at 11pm. We dropped someone home in Newcastle. We thought we should drive back to the train station <laughs> just in case. In Barrow, by the way. Yeah, right. 30 minutes back. He's not on the train. He's like 30 metres, not that far from the train station, <laughs> without everything he had. Yeah. Doesn't lost have his, his backpack phone, or lost anything. Lost his wallet. Lost and he's only been 30 metres. <laughs> yeah. How the fuck does that happen? I don't know. It's like Chambers. I got a, I got a mate who... Um, when he turned 18, we, we went out to Newcastle and he, he drank way too much before we left and he passed out at Barrisville train station. Who's that? I made him one. Oh, yeah. And he passed out at Barrow train station. He goes, just leave me here and I'll be fine. So we think he's getting up to, to walk home. We get back to Newcastle, uh, Barrow train station at 2 a.m. He's still there and his phone, his wallet, his rings and everything have just been, oh, <laughs> just been taken from him. Oh, no. Fuck. See, that shit's been a tears. See, Benny's wouldn't have got taken. He would have just lost it. <laughs> but this guy, this, this guy just didn't leave this one chair for like seven hours. Oh. <laughs> uh, we went, I went to, um, with Josh, Josh, Freddie, uh, we went to Soundwave one year. And it might have been the year that, that I met you, but you didn't meet me. Yeah, I didn't meet you. Yeah, I remember you. Maybe it was just another hairy... Big Mate, dude. There was a very, was was a very big chance of that because it happened. Did you ever go time. to Soundwave on a big bus? Yes. Yeah, I was on the bus. So Josh, <laughs> <laughs> we took Benny. Benny was with us, Jamie and um, and we had a an extra ticket because someone else was supposed to go was supposed to go with us. And I said to Josh, I'm like, we'll stand at the front and we'll scalp it. And, you know, we'll get rid of it. We'll be able to sell it for heaps. And he goes, no, no, no. I think a good idea would be just to keep the ticket extra because Benny's probably going to be big, you know, kicked out. Mm. So we went straight in there and we walked past a whole lot of dogs and a whole lot of police officers. Benny didn't get like let in. So we had to use this extra ticket to, <laughs> to, get, get, him back in again. to get Brandon. Didn't Benny get like locked in a little cell or something? He got locked in. No, that was at the Red Hot Chili Peppers concert. That's another story I can tell. Fuck. That's <laughs> <laughs> so Benny got kicked out, but he got an, um, a, a court... Uh, like a cannabis caution, a cannabis caution, or something like that, because he got he got caught with marijuana, and he got the cannabis caution. And then at the sound wave that year, Phil and Samo from Pantera played, and he got the cannabis caution signed by <laughs> Phil, <laughs> and it says <laughs> to Benny, "Rock on, love Phil," and he's got it like duct taped on the wall of his shed. That's the best. It's so fucking awesome. cool. <laughs> you know, it's it's a it's a sad story that a man has to have a spare ticket to go to a festival. <laughs> But it's a cool story that you got signed from Phil. Man, that's I, I miss festivals and I certainly miss gigs in his, his day and age. There's plenty of cool stories and, and a lot of them do involve drugs, unfortunately, mm. or, or fortunately, depends which way you look at it. <laughs> do you know what, man? I don't, I don't, I, I don't necessarily. When I go to a music festival or a gig, I don't. Um, I try to stay away from it. It depends. Which, it depends who I'm. How going many to see festivals have you been to without drugs? L- most of them. Most of them. But. Without taking them all together, yep. like completely. Yep, yep, Ooh. yep. Absolutely, absolutely. No, no, Nen. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. And can your bandmate say the same? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much you're willing to talk about, but I do recall nah. Fre- Frenzel recently. Oh yeah. Who, how many people listen to this podcast? I don't know how 12. deep we should <laughs> <laughs> we should delve into <laughs> this, man. Everyone loses their jobs after this. The reason, the reason, the reason, the reason I'm going to say is there's, there's a, a cool tie that I find between you guys and myself with uh, friends or rom gigs and, and narcotics or, or whatever you want to talk about because... <laughs> there's no narcotics. Well, there's something. Did you say Coddy's? No, like Coddy's no. Cordial? Because so anyway, I drink Coddy's sugar Cordial. Cube. It was a sugar cube. Sugar cube. <laughs> I have sugar cubes. Someone, <laughs> someone gave me a sugar cube and I felt real funny afterwards. And I, I said no because I was trying to be I'm responsible. But... but <laughs> One of the many times I've seen Frenzel, and this story still blows my mind that I even did it, left left Frenzel at Barona Hill to walk towards the train station, got, uh, a, a, let's call it an ecstasy tablet, out of my pocket, 
and dropped it. <laughs> that was not well, a suit. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Assuming. Dropped it on the ground in the fucking in Warbrook and it's all dark and shit. And I was like, fuck this. So I'm on my knees crawling around for this, for this ecstasy tablet. Find it, eat it, stand up and go, fuck, that was a rock. <laughs> <laughs> so I've just swallowed a rock off the ground in fucking Warrabrook after a friends with you. you know, I dropped a bud once when I, was, when I was having a session. I, dro- I dropped a little bud on the ground and I, I, I thought I picked it up and I, I, I chucked it in my cone piece because it was relatively small. I chucked it in the cone piece and lit it up and smoked it. As I've hit, hit it with a lighter, I've realised it was a fucking dead cockroach. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. It pulled the whole thing too. Let's go back to the friends. How many good stories do you hear from friends or gigs or friends or moments and stuff like that? How, how did you get in the friends or? Uh, it would have been... Who's hosting the podcast? I'm a big fan. You can't ask the question. <laughs> Welcome Jeez, back. you're a fuck with Welcome you. back to Jaden TV. <laughs> Jaden TV. Well, hey, Lenny. Here's the Jaden show. How long did it take for me to take over? Thank, that's all right. Thanks for having us, no, on, your, can thanks I, for having can us on your show. Um, Jay, you would have been into him before me. Because right? you were always a metalhead who loved friends, all right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Me, I think it wasn't until like... Yeah. Yeah. Meet the Family was that was the new album when I got into one. Meet the Family was, and they had the special edition with the uh, with Mungrel. Right. Yeah, the that CD, was, the double CD. Yeah, man. Yeah, had the live CD. Because I was, I was a new. Uh, it was, it was a live show at the the Van. The Van Van's Warped Tour. Tour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, ask, I ask everyone this because I've heard how good this show was. Were you at the infamous Tompty Land gig? <laughs> no, but Freddie was. Josh, Josh. Um, Benny or Alex took Josh. Yeah, right. Fuck, this is too much Fredgate chat. Yeah, we'll get over it soon. We'll get off it soon. <sighs> you should have a podcast with all four of them. Three Jeez, of them. Oh. Four. How many is there? There's, oh, well, it was Josh, uh, there's Josh, Alex, Benny, Simon, and then there's also Scott. <laughs> I've got an idea for that podcast name too. I think Ordinary People, Ordinary Stories. Yeah, yeah. it would be ordinary. <laughs> love them. Yeah. Do, 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 do you know what? I do love them, but they're all fucking pains in the ass. But that's why I love them too. <laughs> that's, that's why we love Sid, just quietly. <laughs> to answer your question though, I, I, I think because I was a new metal kid, I kind of shied away from them until the Sansusi album. Yep. And then, really? I, then, oh. I was just, then I was just all in because that album is still their best. I didn't like meet the camel. Um, uh, <laughs> meet the camel. <laughs> <laughs> meet the camel. Man's not a camel. <laughs> Man's not a camel. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of that when it came out. I like it now, but when it came out, it, Friends all became they were very popular at that point. So the, mm. the sound changed a little bit. But in yeah. my opinion, Fr- Friends all's best stuff is the, probably the last two albums. The last two. Yeah. Uh, fuck uh, yeah, man. Fuck yeah. Smoko yeah. and um and. Uh, High Viz Yeah Two, yep. two yep. terrific albums I agree with that I, I, I just think if Sorry No there you go mate It's all you <laughs> <laughs> It's um. your day <laughs> 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 No, nah, I've, I've, I've got to be honest I missed the Friends Old Train I, I absolutely missed it I didn't listen to them as a kid I didn't know I knew who they were Because of the doctor And he was on Triple J He used to play Dead Little Rebels a fair bit But um <laughs> Fuck. Oh. That was Jack's day. <laughs> Gibbo's day. But uh, yeah, I, I can you hear him masturbating now? <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't stopped all show. But I, I have from that Spotify. I've uh, they've come across my radar again, and I know since meeting Jaden, it's obviously been a thing. So I've listened to a lot of them. One thing Speaking of friends on oh. Spotify, have you noticed that the, the last two albums sound terrific on Spotify? Everything else sounds like it was recorded in a fucking baked bean tin. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like our al- albums. Yeah. <laughs> no, sounds, your albums nah. sound a little bit better. The, the, the I would quality. go a baked bean tin. I'd go a fucking, I don't know, a ratchet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd sound like a, a fucking hardwood shed covered with, um, what's Rats. this? What's that called? <laughs> Tin. Tin. tin, tin, yeah, yeah, <laughs> tin. <laughs> that's what it sounds like because that's exactly what I hear. Jaden's very good with his hands, as you can tell, and words. That, that's why you're always. That's why you're always smiling. <laughs> yeah. One thing I thought was pretty cool. One thing I thought was cool about you guys. That My dad could beat maybe. <laughs> <off>. <laughs> Off. I remember My dad could beat me. <laughs> I remember you got the, the night of that last friendship show. You guys actually got offered the gig, right? Did yeah. We? Oh, yeah. yeah, we had to turn it down. Did we? T- did we? You turned it down because yeah. you were playing another show, which I thought was pretty cool. Even yeah, though we did. you offered the chance to play for one of your favorite bands, you still kept it the gig that's that you were. Yeah, man. Is, is that kind of something that's important to you? Not ditching gigs, not dropping out last minute, all that kind of shit. Um, not so much ditching gigs, but you, you shouldn't drop out. If you say you're going to do something, you should you should yeah. fucking do it. And just yeah. because it's can I? Because you know yeah, how much of a pain in the ass it is to try and organize something yeah, yeah. like. It's the biggest gig I would have ever played, hands down, it was would have been in Melbourne, and we got asked to support Royal Blood. 
nice. But we turned it down because we were playing the drummer's mum's 50th. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so we drove back to... I would have used that. <laughs> <laughs> so we drove back yeah, to Fort Macquarie from that's Melbourne um, we played the 50th. She must, she must, but been, she must have been a sword. So we weren't going <laughs> to miss... No, we, we, we weren't going to miss his mum's 50th. Yeah, well, that's, that's than your I think that's important too. So like, it sucks. It absolutely. Sucks. But it's royal blood. But it's yeah, I really like royal blood. I think you should weigh up. Um, I would have missed my mum's today's day and age. If blood. you if you want to be if you want to be famous, you want to be somebody that people know. It, it's like the internet's out there. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's hard, but it's also it's not that hard, is it? Like, if you want to work for it, you want to try and make a bit of name for yourself. But do you want to play music or do you want to be a do you want to be a famous person? Yeah, if you yeah. want to play music, you want to play punk rock. Weigh, up, weigh it up. It just, I, I just thought it was great because like, there are so so many examples that you see of bands ditching out last minute and you guys got a chance to play for at least one of your favourite bands. Yeah, and for you sure. Went, no, no, we're going to play Mayfield Bolo instead. Yeah, the Cambridge message is like, well, we need someone to support. Um, and I don't even know if it was on the same stage as at Friends All Played. It could have been in the other room. I don't know. But no, I just no, it was all in that one room. Was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh fuck. <laughs> 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 he thought it was the other room that we cancelled. I mean, <laughs> but no, it doesn't, it wasn't. It doesn't matter. We, need a manager. we already told this is why somebody. We absolutely need a manager. We don't have a manager. If anyone's out there listening, that they. Well, we're going to get Matty, <laughs> Matt Parker what, wanted to be in management too. I reckon he should. Should still we'll, do it. We'll let him know. You, tell, you asked me once. I, I asked Lenny. I said, "I'm willing to be manager because someone needs to sort us out." I haven't got the time or the patience. Yeah, I think that's important. I a hundred percent think that's important because uh, people people matter, don't Absolutely, they? Yeah, yeah. And if you if you want to portray yourself as a as a punk rock band, which is um, punk rock is about people, mm-hmm. yeah, but isn't it? At the same if you want to portray yourself as a punk rock band, then fucking look after the people. If someone books you to play a gig. You want to play like a like a small Mayfield Bolo. Club gig, you might play in front of twenty to thirty people. Then you fucking do that yeah, gig. Yeah, do yeah, what you say. Exactly. You're do. And well, like we we uh, we had fun at that gig. That was a fucking fun gig. Well, but you're, like, you're all in form when you rocked up to the game. Bell. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but she like, fucking hates me. But like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if we turned up and played that friends or gig, like it, not many people might have watched us. It might have been a shit gig, and we went, "That was a shit gig. We shouldn't have done that." But I think I don't know. Just playing gigs that you know people are going to turn up to. And it's going to be fun. You just turn up and do it. Well, it's something yeah. we're all looking forward to. Do you guys foresee a future for live gigs anytime soon with any kind of normality? Or I don't know. It's no one's say, to really. Yeah. And, and, and have you guys been to any shows recently? I've been to a couple again, finally. And, and it's, it's fantastic to see live bands again, but it's so weird to do it stuck to a chair. Yeah, I've been do- I'm not going to sit down and watch a band. No. I want to go watch Dave Wells because I can yeah, feel yeah. like I can sit down and watch him. Yeah, there's no real, there's really no mosh pit at all. No, the but I, I don't, I can't see myself going to watch a band like Friends All or a punk band and sit down and watch them. Another band that we've we've had on, Totally Unicorn. Yeah, they they played some shows recently. Did they really? You couldn't sit down and watch them though. I can't. Seventy five people sat down and watched. (gasps) Yeah, and he walks around in his undies and and he's sweating over everybody. (laughs) No, no, he he still walked around. No, to his his credit, he stayed on the stage. But when they went went on sale, I just went. That's not at all what a Total Unicorn show is. But it's working for some people. Yeah, Yeah. we're doing wrestling. With wrestling, we're doing closed shows inside of a our training shed. Yeah, yeah, but no mosh pits. Well, <laughs> no, no, my push, but like wrestling is, I don't know if you guys know, but wrestling is, is fake. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? Get <laughs> fucked! Don't tell, that. No. don't tell him that, man. No. <laughs> no. Right. So, right. so, Christmas so, is cancelled. So, <laughs> so the, the, um, the crowd plays a, a whole lot of things. Everyone knows it. Like, you don't go to a movie, you don't go to a movie and go, oh, I know that that person isn't actually a superhero. That's why you go to watch a wrestling show, isn't it? Did you it? see the you point which project when you were fucking 15? You suspend disbelief. Um, so Robert Downey Jr. isn't really a genius that can make super suits. Yeah, no, well, maybe. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so we're doing, we're doing it with wrestling and um, the crowd <laughs> plays a, a, the crowd coke, plays a big part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of drugs. A lot of drugs. The crowd plays a big part in wrestling. Drugs are great. Um, but we still, we still go and do it, and it's different, hey. When you, you, have, you, you, have you seen any of the stuff that's been going to air lately from the bigger companies that are doing empty shows? I saw the Powderfinger one. No, no, wrestling. I'm talking wrestling. about wrestling. wrestling. Yes, so I have. Let's go back to wrestling. I'm hey. talking about music, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> back over to wrestling. No, 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 no. I was just trying to relate it, too. That's, no, right. This is a wrestling so podcast, obviously. Yeah, I forgot. Sorry. Yeah, it's about James wrestling, Stout, obviously. 
This is our podcast, Body Slam. That I like Wish Freddie was Again, Jaden show. Body, <laughs> Body Slam with Jay and Lenny. So, Gibbo, you, you can't see yourself going to any sit-down shows anytime soon? Um, well, look, to be honest, I've just avoided pubs. But Newcastle had that scare fucking three or yeah, four yeah, weeks yeah, ago. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not that, like, I'm worried about getting coronavirus and, like, I don't see my parents enough to give it to them, but... I'm worried about just having to force myself into fucking 14 days in my house again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to do it. So my when it all kicked off, my girlfriend came back from India um, March 20 or something like that, and she got tested for she coronavirus. She had the coronavirus. Well, she, she, my girlfriend gets fucking sick at the best of times, God love her. But she came back with, like, runny nose and all this. So I, I had to drive to the hospital, and she got the coronavirus test and came back. And this is when it took fucking, not overnight, it took God knows how long. It took 10 days, I think, to get the result back. Yeah, but right. it meant I had to... Was like we were just locked in a house. My brother was going to get me groceries, and I was like, I don't want to go through that again. That shit yeah, is. yeah, be terrible. I got a mate who lives in uh, Amsterdam who tours for Sleep Makes Waves. You know that band? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's he's basically because he comes back and plays with them on tour. And he said, look, even if they ask me to still do it in March, if I've if I've got to do two weeks either side, I'm just yeah. like I'm not doing it. It's just, yeah. Have, have you had any big gigs cancelled or, or whatnot that you were scheduled for? We yeah, we had two gigs cancelled. What about that you were going to, though? Oh, that I was going to? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had yeah. one. Oh, yeah. G-Flip and Hilltop. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> I saw G-Flip at Splendour about two years ago. I like, I like them. I like cool. Hilltop and G-Flip, so it's fine. Nah, but they're, they're both Australian, right? Yes. yes. Do you foresee... Like, because I don't see... I don't see international bands playing Australia for 12 months. Might be a good thing. Yeah, potentially. I think it would be good for Australian bands. Yep. Yeah, it will be. G-Flip gave me massive fucking goosebumps at Splendor because it was like just as she blew up she was like I'm going to play this song you guys probably heard about it and I was like I fucking heard about it I got all these goosebumps I was like this is sick I, I think she's good <laughs> yeah she is good you apart are, the you... fact she wears like horrible Crocs that's yeah, you wear Crocs don't you Jay? but that's the thing these days weekends <laughs> <laughs> Weekend every day's a weekend for me well you guys have played the illustrious music for the Mind Festival co- ran by me obviously you are um, <laughs> <laughs> Lenny's I, day I believe <laughs> what, what festival did you play With Dirty Little Rebels I've played Festival of the Sun Twice And they were <laughs> Sorry And they were Which festivals Festival of the Sun Oh Festival of the Sun Sorry no. I thought you said I've played festivals twice No sorry Yeah I, I was with you I thought he yeah. Sorry yeah <laughs> That's alright No I've how, played Festival of the Sun twice. How is it going in As, as one of the um, How do I say this Respectfully <laughs> One of the, the I guess the, the younger bands the, the less known bands On the bill how is it? Do you guys interact much with the bigger bands backstage? Uh, not. So the first year we were pretty young and it was pretty, um, I don't know. We, we, so the first year we played, we were the unearthed um, winner. Yeah, right. Um, and so it was like a, it was a new thing. Like I'd been going to that festival for years because it's Port Quarry. So I'd been going to it for a while. And then um, the second time was pretty good. We played at like a lunchtime slot and I think the Datsuns played that year. Yeah, right. And it was Shit, yeah. the only the only cool thing about it was like we had the access or like AIA pass, so like the Datsuns finished and like I was I was at the front of the mosh with Bones, our lead guitarist, and I was like, let's fucking go. And so like we skated the mosh and ran backstage and then like greeted the Datsuns as they came off stage. I was like, that was fucking sick, boys. But that was about it. Like yeah, right. Yeah, I thought the Datsuns a choice until I had to sit through them waiting for Metallica. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember they, they got booed off stage. Did they? they? Yeah, well, essentially. Yeah, that's a oh, weird choice them, to have man. before Metallica. Yeah, well, it was. It was when they played. Considering they all wanted fucking Mars Volta to open for them. This is in 2004. Yeah, it was a big day out. Yeah, uh, they wanted Mars Volta to open for them because they were all big Mars Volta fans and then the Datsuns opened for them and it was just fucking atrocious. I thought they'd at least nab the darkness because they were on the line up there. I think well. big big oh, bands yeah, at yeah, festivals darkness. like that, I don't, know. I, don't, I don't know if I agree with that. Big bands like that? Big bands like... Um, I've seen Green Day at a uh, Soundwave. Did you... That Soundwave that Green Day played? Yeah, I didn't watch them now. And they played play. a three-hour set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck off. Three hours. Yeah. Three no, hours. Yeah, three-hour set at a fucking festival, Iron you Maiden. wankers. Iron Maiden got two. I was at that too, and I left. Yeah, right. I left. I went and watched Pennywise. I think I Which makes sense, because I like punk rock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Soundwave, the 2011 one that Iron Maiden played. Mm. Yeah, yeah it's when I, I met Jade yeah. on a bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he probably doesn't remember it, but I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> I was at that Soundwave. I thought... The best part about that was Fear of the Dark when it started playing everything with Dark. Says, the best part about that was... I never made was... it to a sound wave. I was too young. No, you were too you were young four. for sure, young. bro. Yeah. I never went yeah. Yeah. Pat in the back. Uh, Queens Thanks. of the Stone Age at 2011. Yeah, that was cool too. That um, oh. fucking honestly, it felt like someone pulled the top of my head off yeah. and just yeah. my brain splattered because... Um, Is that... 
uh, everything, every other festival I went to was like pre, I went in there, I was like, I love this band, I love this band. I heard Queens of Stone Age, of course, before, and I heard Caius before mm. and, and things like that. But I went in there and I was like, I, these guys are kind of cool. And I went there and watched Queens of Stone Age and it was like the top of my head fucking blew off. It was it was honestly a spiritual experience for I, me to watch Queens of Stone Age there that year. It was I just fucking thing unbelievable. Was, I'm not a massive fan of those guys, but I saw them at Big Day Out in 04. Yeah. And I was just like, why is this cunt naked? Why is this dude, what's going on here? And then as soon as they started playing, I was like, this is pretty fucking good. Yeah, it, it's 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 like fucking musician porn. <laughs> if you if you know music and you listen to Queens of Stone Age, you can't help but fucking just, love it. Just don't be a female photographer in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> Flip job, Ed. <laughs> no, but <laughs> one day as a lion played that same year, didn't they? Yep. Yeah, yep. that was fucking cool too. Yeah, that was cool. Because I didn't know who they were. I didn't know anything about them. I didn't realize. But it was in the. It was Zach Della Rocker. Is that the crowd? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was in the crowd, being like, "This is." Fucking sick, and it was crazy. That's well, a good year. A very good year, bloody good year. And it was, uh, <laughs> I don't know if it was the same year, but I also went to the sound wave that Slayer were meant to play. Yeah, I was there too. Yeah, that was around the same year. It's around because I went 2011. I only went to a couple of them, yeah. Too, yeah. I went 2011, 2012. One of the years Slayer was meant to play, and I remember like my brother and I just fucking loved Slayer. So we are fucking like the drum. The drum kit on this fucking dolly gets wheeled out, and everyone's like, "Yeah, fucking woo!" And we're sitting around like people with goatees and shaved heads and smoking Darius. Like, Fuck, we're in for this. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like just, a fa- just a thousand Phil and Cell yeah. yeah. It was like fucking hell. And then like fifteen minutes before they were, like after they were starting like meant to play. Like, yeah, because he came out like, late. The dude came out late well, to announce it. Didn't they he? came out late, and he was just like, "All right, uh, I can't remember who it was, but he was in a small issue with a spider." Yeah, he was like, "He's in hospital. He's not going to be able to make it." And then I was like, "Fuck, boo!" Ripping their Slayer shirts off, burning them, throwing them on stage, and we're like, "This is fucking hectic!" <laughs> like people just like throwing. I see. Were they, were they closing the show? I, the, no, 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 no they're like in the up, they're the fucking mid afternoon, yeah. bro. <laughs> It was about five o'clock, yeah. but it was like people just fucking launching cans and anything they just get their fucking... The poor dude, like, they would have had drawn short straws behind stage where I can go, who's going to fucking... <laughs> Metal like, fans are insane. I remember, I remember in 2001, I went and saw Pantera and uh, Corrosion and Conformity at the Horton Pavilion. After the show, people wanted their ticket stubs back. They, want, they wanted a ticket that said fucking Pantera on it. So... Yeah. Because they couldn't get them, security said no. They ripped down the fucking fences and just went crazy <laughs> and, and started a little right because they wanted a little piece of paper that said Pantera. Metal fans are yeah. fucking nuts. Good, yeah. good, on, good on them. What's it hurt them? What's it hurt the security to give to the, give the cars back? Yeah. Give the fucking yeah. cars back. Fuck, Fuck them. Fuck <laughs> I agree with that. Fuck. I agree with I'm it. Gonna, I'm not going to place I agree yeah. as well. I'm just saying that the yeah. cunts went crazy because of uh, some paper. My favourite... It gets to a point, like, sometimes that... Um, sorry, Lenny. No, you're right. <laughs> so, sometimes. <laughs> sorry, it's awkward. You're interrupting. The, it is your show. <laughs> the authority. Anywhere I go day. is my show. Yeah. I was quiet for so fucking long. No, time. you weren't. <laughs> you haven't been quiet the whole time. No, day. you weren't. If anyone's been quiet, it's been Mason. <laughs> I haven't spoken for 14 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> my, my favorite thing with metal crowds was always like the doors aren't open yet, but I, f- I think if we all get together and push. They're going to let us <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, which let me tell you Never ever fucking worked never. But fucking hell They tried every gig uh, As you were Jay. But security get fucking Way overzealous though At, at metal shows especially I think they, they get fucking Real cunty and, and Yeah they do <laughs> They expect a For a reason so though a It's fight. for a reason I get yeah, it, 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 it It's a certain point That the authority Need to take over Take over and say Okay we, we, you can't just Keep pushing towards the front Because people People yeah. can die. Yeah, but the two people we, we of authority that they have there is not going to make the 3,000 that are pushing but against that, them. that thing nah. about the tickets, you can't have your ticket back. Fuck that, yeah. man. Give people their fucking ticket. Yeah. Yeah. Give people their ticket. All they're going to do is dump them and fucking... Yeah. And that's, just, them that's just like... That's a fucking power move. Give people their ticket. They want a ticket so they can hang on we the wall. We got them back in the end. We, I ended up getting that fucking a, hand, or a handful of the fucking things yeah. at home. They're still sitting there. Do you, do you collect all that shit? All your old... <laughs> no, I, I got, used to. I got posters. And then when I moved, I just checked them all out. I got heaps of posters that I've seen. I'm gay and got like bands from... Fucking Oi, there's nothing wrong with that, Jack. He never said it did. was about Jack. Do you know how he said that we're going to say something that's not right? That's it, Jack. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there are a lot of gay guys that collect stuff. <laughs> like, no, I've, I've Just got, because like, you're gay doesn't mean you can't collect you're things. You're a fucking dude. asshole. What the hell? Do you want your change, mate? No, thank you, I'm gay. <laughs> like, way out of proportion. Uh, can I have my change things? I collect things, I'm gay. <laughs> you know, give that going. 
I was just going to yourself a bit more. I've got like the, I've got like the splendor and like the falls bands and like the pot sound bands. I've got all those. Like, you, and you, groove, groove the moon. Stuff like I that. used to collect online, but I I from all. Mason, that. I reckon hundred percent you would have been the bloke that would go to groove in the moon, get that band, and wouldn't take it off for at least six months. Oh fuck, oh, I was, was me. Gone. Yeah, was me. Oh, was yeah. That was me. Yeah. I reckon it'd be you, Mason. I reckon That's you'd disgusting be, behavior. I reckon you're more of that than anyone here. No, I'd take mine um, off. Too. I've always been responsible. Can I say about the Slayer thing? Hey, bro. I've always had a job. I've always had to take it off on Monday morning. Can I say about the Slayer thing? About how people throw on their short their shirts yeah, at Slayer yeah. and stuff like that. I never listened to a Slayer album. Like I'd heard Rain and Blood, like everyone else has had. Yeah. Uh, everyone else had. You heard it on Guitar Hero. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. I never, I never listened to them. Whereas I, I fucking nailed it. I liked. Yeah. Yeah. I've listened to metal and I like. I like metal, but I was in the like a massive metal head. Yeah, yeah. Well, Slayer sucks too, so that probably doesn't help. <laughs> so, but Slayer's thrash metal, bro. Jess and I went to um, yelly, yelly. Jess and I went to uh, download last year in February mm. because like heaps of good punk bands there as well. And Slayer's farewell. It was Slayer's farewell, and we had planned. I called up our lift. And I was like, "Can we pick us up? Slayer's about to play. That's when we're gonna gonna leave because someone else played before Slayer that we wanted to see." And then we're going to leave. And Slayer started playing. And I had never seen them before because the one time that I would get to see Slayer was at the year that they were meant to play at Soundwave, but they bailed because the old mate was sick. And when Slayer played, they played half an hour, see, half an hour of their set. And I was like, holy fuck, I get it. Mm. I get it. I get why people love it because that was a masterclass of brutal guitar, I mean, when you've drums. Got, when you've it was got just one like song, three, there was a couple of good musicians, man, that were just fucking slaying it. They're tight as fuck. I mean, you can like them or not, but you can't fault the fact that they are tight musicians. Yeah. And every incarnation of the band has been a very tight unit. Yeah. yeah. And when, yeah. You, when you play the same song... It was just impressive. It was just impressive to watch. <laughs> you're not going to make mistakes. What? When you play the same song 12 times in a set, you're not going to make mistakes. <laughs> Did they do that? Is that a thing? They do every set. <laughs> every album. Lenny thinks all their music sounds... He also, he also isn't, that called the cha- <laughs> isn't that called the chats? They do the same thing. Oh, fuck. Oh, I see where you got from now, yeah. We just Shots sound jealous play. when we talk about those yeah, guys. We just sound that's jealous. True. Slayer are fucking cool though. Like honestly, like yeah, Slayer Rain, are actually cool. Rainy Blood's a good song, hands down. Doesn't matter that it was on fucking Guitar Hero. <laughs> Angel of Death is a fucking good song. Slayer Angel the only, of Death the is a good way song. The only way I sound of Slayer south of Bam Majera. I heard south of Bam Majera. South of Heaven is a fucking good song. Ding 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 ding. But that's a fucking cool song. It's a copyright who's yeah. who's going to win in a fight between Slayer and Sabbath? Oh, Sabbath. Sabbath. Oh, oh, Sabbath. You can't Sabbath. knock back oh, Aussie. Fuck off. What moron. the fuck? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Do you, guys want, want to, do you guys want to see that? This idiot here, that, uh, uh, something you don't know about Lenny Jones. Doesn't like Black Sabbath, doesn't like Alice Cooper. Shut your but fucking mouth. Do you want to see loves Gibbo's dad roll. beat Lenny? Yeah. <laughs> off, hopefully. Do you guys want off. to see? I know you, we're not filming. Actually, are we filming? No, Sid's doing know. something. Oh, I, I thought we were filming. If you guys want to film this, this is something great. Jaden, what are your film thoughts on the song Bittersweet <laughs> Symphony by The Verb? That's a good song. <laughs> ah, here we go. <laughs> Gibbo <Give> came, <laughs> <Give O'Kay laughs> came out of my place for it. Wasn't even, it wasn't band practice, it was a social visit. And he goes, as soon as he walked through the door, he goes, do you like the song Bittersweet Symphony? <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> why, do you walk, why do you walk in asking that question? Well, yeah, that's it, all, yeah. It came on in the car. Because he would have been listening to it on the car yeah, the way here yeah, four yeah. times in a row. No, it was once, but I was like, <laughs> it's a good song. So it's it's, it's not, not a good song. song. It's a good song. I always walk into Jay's house going, do you like driving? <laughs> <laughs> I just drove here, it's fucking sick. <laughs> the Verve, they had, they had another song as well. They had the drugs I don't work. know any other song. <laughs> they, had one, they had one more but song. In the, in the, like a, a film yeah, they had a, a the drugs don't work, yeah. they only make things worse. Yeah, yeah. Do you know why that's a friends will do a song, cover of that? No, Greenspoon do a cover of that. Yeah, that's, cover the the only yeah. Cov- that's the only part of that song I know. It's the only version I really listen to. Yeah, that's the same. Oh, it's very good. Yeah, big fan. You guys aren't scared of covers. You guys actually have a little side band as a. Uh, a little covers set that you do. How'd that come about? Um, it came about because we got asked to play at a wedding. Yeah, right. <laughs> a strange band for a wedding. Yeah. yeah. So it works for me. And well, so, so you can play a few covers. And we said, if we were going to play covers, it would have to be kind of ironic Australian uh, 
I guess rock. Yeah, yeah. Rock covers. Can someone help me out with this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just um, ironic. Pretty much, Australia. pretty much think of Australian rock covers, and that's what we played <laughs> pretty well. Um, and then a couple of our own that we kind of wanted to so the, play that we played already. The, the songs that we pl- we write. The, the, sorry, the people that we write songs about about you know piss wreck mm. and new car and um, you know the, the sub- middle class suburban Australian people. What did they listen to? Australian cl- crawl, <laughs> ACDC, Midnight Oil, you know, the classics. But it, it basically, like, the, the wedding, whose wedding it was, it was my mate from uni that I met, and like, he loves Bin Lindsay. And he doesn't like, listen to any song before 2001. No, he, <laughs> well, he, come, he comes to every single Bin Lindsay gig, and he actually has, like, a couple of brothers that live overseas, and so for the wedding, it was, like, his whole family getting together, and he's like, this is going to be the only chance I get to see Bin Lids. So... <laughs> One, I want you to play at the wedding. Two, I want you to play your own fucking set because I, <laughs> I want everyone, all my family to see you guys play. Three, just play whatever you want. So we walked around there and it was like, you know, and animals fucking... On yeah. the way to the middle of fucking nowhere, yeah, we had to make way. their wed- wedding playlist that they wanted us to play. <laughs> Pretty much. No, we so had a long their time. walk-in song from their wedding... I had to play for them. Yeah, right. That we also had to download on the way there. <laughs> the, best part of, me. the best part about that gig. <laughs> the best fucking part about that gig was Jaden goes, Gibbo, have you restrung your bass strings? And I was like, nah, <laughs> don't need to. It's a fucking bass. Strings don't break. <laughs> we're in the fucking middle of nowhere. And we're halfway through the set. It was, I don't know what string it was. Fucking broke. <laughs> the the, the, the eyes that are, I gave to Gibbo could are, have fucking pierced through was, Satan himself. I was playing and I was like, I was so disappointed in myself. I didn't need Jaden's gaze. And I've just like looked right and Jaden's gone. <laughs> if you can see me right now, Jay's just give me a nod and looking at me straight. And I'm just like, oh, I fucking do not know what to do, mate. Fuck you. <laughs> but the wedding de- wedding went down well. Yeah, it did. Yeah, they did. It. Yeah, they loved it. Because you, you did it at my birthday, and by that point in time, I don't remember the day. But you guys, everyone on Monday is like, who the fuck's that band? Bin lives. They were fucking choice. Because you, you guys did the original set, and then you finished the day with. We the did. Yeah. yeah. I think that's something that we'll continue. Yeah. To it's do fun because to do. the idea is we're like the band that. You play at your barbecue in the back of your shed. And can I just say that we play the songs, like those Midnight Oil songs and those uh, ACDC songs and those all those songs, ironically, but we're not taking anything away from them. Yeah, they're still good songs. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's the kind of... It was a simpler time. It was a simpler time in um, Australia, a simpler yeah, yeah. time in society, and that's, uh, I guess... What we're trying to portray. I reckon you're onto something because I've found that cover bands don't seem to fucking update their catalogues for the last 20 years. Mm. And people our age are probably not going to want I'd rather see Aussie Crawl at their well, They're wedding. all playing Enna Sandman and well, Kaysan and fucking. Yeah. I'd rather see a cover band play a song how they think it should sound, which is yeah, I think yeah. what, it's what we do. Yeah. 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 Like you go to the Dell on <laughs> Saturday night. Jade and I have a great chat about the Dell. <laughs> but you, you go to the Dell on a Saturday night and it sounds exactly how it sounds. And it's like, well, this fucking yeah, shit yeah. else. I'd just rather. Put and every CD. band has the same set list yeah. as well. It's, it's fucking shit. Yeah. Not taking anything against them, that's their job. Not many bands play Radio Birdman for their first yeah. cover uh, set. We play Radio Birdman. And like, I don't know, our cover of um, Hilltop Woods Nosebleed yeah. section, that's so fun to play. Yeah. It was good. It went down, went down a treat. Went down an absolute treat. I don't remember yeah. playing it. I don't remember it seeing it. Fun. I know that it went down well. <laughs> that day, I, 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 um, I got home at about, I think, 12. And I was fucked. And then I had a funny cigarette. And felt good. Cannabis. And went, and went <laughs> <laughs> he smoked no. cannabis. And then I went, fuck it, I'm good to go now. I'm going to see where everyone else is. And I looked at my phone and it was five past one. And I was like, fuck, I've missed every single fucking lockout. But for everyone that went, they had a great day thanks to you guys. It was awesome. It was a good day. Zinger didn't turn up though, which I was disappointed about. No, fuck him. Now, speaking of covers. He was at home collecting stuff. Speaking of covers, through the week in, in the group chat that we had, there was, there was talk of a uh, puddle of mud. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh. Can Jack I? Can I? What? Why do can you? Someone elaborate for me. Jack just really loves Puddle of Mud. Yeah, it's a good song. Yeah. The one song they have. <laughs> Man, I, I'm, I'm a big say, fan of that song, though. I've only it's just the worst seen of their singles. Last week, I only just saw Pardon? their, their cover. But, sorry, of I just I, I thing, sweet and fucking worst. It is. No, no. Of their three singles, that's by far the worst. <sighs> what? Which one? She hates me. It's a good song. Good song. Yeah. Someone played that at my school assembly and they tried to make a Rutherford High say, She really hates me. It didn't work. No, no all, all it didn't. It. No, they had to stop playing. 
She fucking hates me. <laughs> yeah, all day, so yeah, no, yeah. yeah. You cannot go to a high Rutherford school. Rutherford High, Michelin boys were there as well. You cannot what go to a, a high school and go, right, guys, we're going to do the censored words here. <laughs> yeah. So this song, oh, I got this song in my head. This is one of my dad's songs. So this is what I'm talking about. You know, dad's got shit music. <laughs> I'm not saying Puddle of Mud is good or bad. I'm just saying dad listens to shit music, which is Puddle of Mud. <laughs> is this the kind of shit that your neighbour leans over and listens to? Pretty much. <laughs> I don't think we're allowed to play it. Oh, fuck it, we'll play it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. We're not playing either. We're playing a four like a chord progression, I, Leonard. I hereby take on all liability. <laughs> What's his name? He's a, he's a junkie. He won't sue us. Or he will. <laughs> like, <laughs> did you actually see? That, that was that that he will now. <laughs> that makes him sue us now. <laughs> was it, was it Puddle of Mun who did the, the Nirvana cover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just saying that. Yeah, I've only just seen it. That was awful. Have you seen that, Jack? Uh, was it you that sent it to yeah, you? Yeah, I sent it to you, yeah. He I didn't realise that was Jamie, them. pull that shit that up. That fucking sucks. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Holy <laughs> hell. He sounds like Cartman. Mad yeah. girl, <laughs> thought she was great. <laughs> keep so, the guitars, yeah? So yeah gonna, keep them, keep them. We're going to play, on a, play another new tune so soon. Guitar? Well, uh, we're, not, we're not doing Puddle of Mud? No, no the Puddle of Mud came through the Friends of Rom gig. We were waiting for him to come out. Too much sugar. Too much sugar. We're waiting for it to come out. Everyone, what's the song that everyone, everyone sings like the Queen song at the start? Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody. Everyone's like. So you know Puddle of Mud, She Hates Me, but you don't know Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> you know that song with all the up. singers? No, nah, but like. Yeah, but fuck Queen. But so how does it, why doesn't everyone remember Bohemian Rhapsody? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but how fun was it? Like, Just because he had AIDS. Yeah, yeah. Imagine if the, whatever the old mate's name is from fucking. What's it, what's it? Puddle of mud. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if he was troubled. If he had a moustache, we'd all love him. If he had, yeah, he had age, we'd all fucking love him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Can I just disclaimer? I lo- <laughs> Queen's amazing. Can we, <laughs> can we, say, we say a lot of shit we don't mean? That's one of them. <laughs> yeah, none of the opinions here reflect what we truly believe. But why is it that every in between intermission of bands coming on, that everyone has to sing that Queen song? All I was trying to do that I've night, never experienced that friends that. were all coming on, that we should just sing a song that everyone knows. <laughs> And that song is <laughs> She fucking hates me <laughs> <laughs> na, na, na. And it was basically just Jaden, Lenny and I Mason, were you there? No I don't <laughs> think so <laughs> Where was it at? Friends all at the Cambo Oh, you were I there. was there And it was yeah. just <laughs> three blokes no, just Screaming Ignore me, it's fine <laughs> Were you there? Well, you were probably yeah, off no, doing it's fine. Mason was there probably It's Jaden's day piss. anyway so. Yeah, it was <laughs> When isn't it Jaden's day? But it was basically just three blokes <laughs> Waiting for friends to come I'm out. I'm fucking copping it. Yes. Oh, no. oh, and she fucking hates me. <laughs> well, look, we're going we're gonna to wrap it up because Jaden wants to talk a bit more off camera. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, we done already. We, we didn't about talk about aliens about Jaden. I, I wanted to talk fucking aliens and Bigfoot and shit. We didn't yeah, talk man. That's, 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 the, that's part two. That's part that's two. All right. Part all right. Two. We're leave so this. we're closing with what? what, what, what we're we're going to leave with a new tune, I believe. New tune, yeah, for sure. Yeah, let's do that one. So tell us what it is. Uh, this song is called Shitty Subherb. Shitty Suburb. Shitty Suburb. Shitty Suburb. Shitty suburb. Awesome, we'll give out. It's Mason. about. Go on. Yeah, go on. No. No, no, you talk. It's not my day. You talk. <laughs> it is, Bart. It's I'm about. so polite on the show today as well. It's about the. Uh, if you want to delve into it, it's about um, how shit it is to buy a house in the current climate. Oh, yeah. And you have to buy a shitty. Are you calling Taro a shit off? Yep. It is mentioned. <laughs> yep. Fuck you. Exactly. Yeah, so this song's called Shitty Suburb. Look, thanks for coming on the show. Bean Lids, coming soon to a shitty suburb right, guys, near Stay tuned. You. Next week, we've got the one and only Knights legend, Robbie O'Davis. So stay 97. tuned. In. 97 grand final. Because it's a hard act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> He's just ruled me fucking outro, but here we are with the Bin Lids with one of their special songs. I can't remember the name because I've had too many beers. Here we go. <laughs> Got a mate who bought some land And it cost him to 20 grand Can't afford in a nice part of town Gotta keep that mortgage down Thinks he's ahead of the curve Got a nice place in a shitty suburb This place is state of the art Shitty suburb But he says it's a nice part Thinks he's ahead of the curve Got a nice place in a shitty suburb This place is state of the art Shitty suburb But he says it's a nice part 
doesn't take a genius to see. Somerset Park is just Westwood Breed. You may have got it cheap, my friend. But there's no nice part of West Wall's End. Thinks he's ahead of the curb. Got a nice place in a shitty suburb. He's supposed to stay at the yard. Shitty suburb, but he thinks it's a nice part. He's supposed to stay ahead of the curb. Got a nice place in a shitty suburb. He's supposed to stay at the yard. Got a nice place, but he thinks it's a nice part. No nice part of Taro Living out here is quite a tether There's no nice part of Mayfield We can't all live in Merriweather Thinks he's ahead of the curve Got a nice place in a shitty suburb Supposed to stay the yard Shitty suburb But he says it's a nice part Thinks he's ahead of the curve Got a nice place in a shitty suburb Thinks he's ahead of the curve Shitty suburb Nice part. Thanks, boys. You bloody beauty.